Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Pass the Barb. Today is Monday, August 14th. I am your host, Adam Bartusek. I am back. The boys crushed it while I was gone, but uh, yeah, it was good. Now we got, we are joined by uh, two other guys. We got Mr. Ryan Pinkala. What up? Glad to be back. You know I'm here, boy. I stumbled there. I kind of forgot how to talk. For yeah, a you've been you've been gone a while. We yeah, get it. it's, it's fine. Been a long you know, day. you'll get back uh, into it. Yep. And then we're joined uh, by Sam Sobey, who's in his garage. Beautiful view outside. It was a gorgeous day this afternoon. This morning yeah. sucked. This, this afternoon's morning, nice. This morning was cloudy and windy and gross, and then it's just progressively gotten nicer and nicer. And today's a weird deal. I wanted to bring this up. I, I was out in the boat earlier today. Today was the first day. Like I got a little cold. I had a sweatshirt on and my hands got a little cold. And I don't know if it was because it was just 60 degrees, which is not cold, by the way. But I was like, how am I? How am I cold? But did you did you pop the vest out? That's what everyone wants to know. I didn't pop the vest out. Oh I, like, my I, God. I wasn't. I wasn't what a missed prepared. opportunity. Eh? I like put a sun shirt under a sweatshirt and it, it was just an eerie feeling because it was like. I don't feel like I'm, I'm usually just sweating buckets. You know what I mean? Like yeah. sweating mm-hmm. way too much. Like, but yeah. So this is just maybe a little taste of the end of summer, but I'm sure next week will be like 90 million degrees. Dude, that's, that's how I felt up on, uh, in Northern Minnesota for this last tournament. Um, every morning it was like 50 something or like <laughs> upper forties. So like you got out and you were like, had a sweatshirt and, you know, maybe your bibs, your whole rain suit on. Cause you're like, I don't have any of my winter stuff in my boat. And then you like get out there for a few hours and like every hour you're shedding something. Yeah. Uh, but the worst part, and it's one of my, like, it, it's something I love about fall, but it's also probably my biggest pet peeve with fall. And it also happened to overlap with this. You guys know, like it's the perfect weather day if you're on land, but yeah when you are on the water and it is 65 to 67 and partly cloudy. So like the sun comes out and you're like, Oh, sweatshirt off sun shirt time. And then a cloud hits and you're like, son of a bitch. And you like grab your sweatshirt and yeah. put it back on. And then it goes away and you're like, God, I'm baking again. And all of a sudden in an hour, you've taken your sweatshirt off and put it back on like eight times. And you're like, I, this is way too much work. There's always that sweet spot in spring and fall where you're just like, in when like you're coming off a of winter in the spring and your blood is like thick so it's like you get hot really really easy but yeah. you're used to wearing more clothes you're kind of wearing more clothes and then right now it's just the opposite so i'm telling I, you vest gang coming in yeah, gang. for sure it'll be great <laughs> but no that that uh yeah that was a real thing up there and it's august 14th and we're already talking about rolling into fall but like i heard on the last episode i did listen it was great and Sylvie brought up i agree with like the boy said thank you for wishing me a happy birthday turning 30 but i agree with sam and the worst part of summer is whenever my birthday hits i'm like fuck it's over <laughs> right like, school's right? coming no <laughs> Yeah, who, who ended up winning that? Who ended up winning that? Uh, dude, Gordon Fothergill. <laughs> what we're talking yeah. about? <laughs> no, I meant who Whoa. won the way. You talking about the way in, oh, dude? Way in? I thought you were talking about the tournament. I was at <laughs> yeah. it. I was like, a well, see, we 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 opened a few different other voting channels for this one, so we still have to compile the scores here. Uh, because we my did, vote would be Honor. Yeah, we, I, did, I, we I, did put the poll out on Spotify as well as on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, so we'll have, we'll have to revisit. It was uh, it was pretty close between me and Honor, I think. Sobe did scoop a lot of votes on uh, on Spotify though. So yes, oh, we'll see. which oh. I don't. See. I will say I don't understand how that happens because as a listener, Sobe was so underprepared. It oh, was, I was. He was, yeah. but I think I think the Sobe the Sobe fan base is is hella on Spotify right now. Yeah, it, it's not that I was just underprepared. I think Honor and Ryan, but but Honor on a couple of those two, like they had some that hit home that like yeah, they were I good. Know, I didn't even think it about ends. those being that was the, the best part. quote. Yeah. That was the best quote ever. Or it the ends. porta potty one where you're just like yeah. sweating buckets in one minute or less. Like yeah. that is yeah. there are They're things so that are real. like so real (laughs) that's me that's me in the spring park landing porta potty (laughs) practicing for the blackfish like every summer i know that i can literally feel it (laughs) but i did i did want to bring up aside with that poll thing that uh we are going to be doing more of those polls and stuff on spotify and uh watch that on instagram but along with that we just want to thank people that are listening and please 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 if you're listening to this podcast go rate and subscribe 
whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or even on YouTube. Let us know that you guys are listening. If you have ideas for weigh-ins or anything like that, hit us up. But rate and subscribe. We're growing like crazy right now. We'd like to take this thing to the next level. Number one outdoor podcast in the world. That's who we are right now. Number That's one outdoor are. podcast in Fight the world. Fight me. Fight me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like Ryan wrong. said, thank you. Thank you to all the OG listeners and the new listeners. We've got a whole slew of awesome people coming up for interviews and a bunch of different kind of segments we're going to start here. And we have a very special guest tonight. We won't bring bring them in yet, but it's it's going to be a really good episode. So sit down, strap, and get some corn or just enjoy the drive and enjoy the listen. Yeah, we do have a great guest. And like I said in the intro, it is August 14th. You're probably listening to this about a week and a half from now. The reason being, uh, in a week from now, Sobe and I, when we typically record, are going to be at the next Champions Tour event because it's on a Tuesday for some reason. But, uh, yeah, there's just wicked scheduling conflicts. So we're filming this one or – yeah, recording this one a little bit early. And now, uh, biggest thing, what have you boys been up to? Pink, what's going on in your life? Well, dude, I've still been fishing a lot. I've been trying to get out as much as I can. It's been absolute war zone during the week, though, getting out after work. But I did manage to get out a little bit. Uh, we got a Tuesday nighter uh, coming up, to, well, tomorrow. Um, and I did get out and practice a little bit. Had a lot of fun fishing this weekend. Um, you know, I talked about last week I was up musky fishing. Um, but, yeah, this... This week has been just a little bit of bassing, and then uh, a lot of the hunting things are starting to get rolling, so I'm getting amped up, dude. I've been shooting my bow a bunch, trying to get ready. I got a trip coming up in literally just a couple of weeks, first one of the season, going down to Nebraska, so I'm pretty psyched about that, just Dang. trying to get like mentally back into what's going to be going down this fall. What, what, so are, you hunt, what are you going to hunt in Nebraska? Uh, it's going to be a mule deer. Well, it's a... It's a deer hunt, but the goal is going to be uh, mule deer, a little archery mule deer mission down in Nebraska. Um, you have a like, door buck tag. I have a buck. I have an any deer tag. So that's awesome. Yeah, so it should be super any fun. Deer tag. Yeah. Is that what you said? Any deer? Is that yeah, a thing so you, everywhere? No. Or am I? Am, I was going to say why am it's I called missing? an any deer tag. So I know, but just... I like I. I don't obviously. I, I'm not the hunter on the podcast. Well, but so I feel that's like what, this, they put it right in the name. Thing that happens. Are you saying any deer in terms of like buck doe or like mule deer, white tail, whatever? Yeah, whatever you want, dude. We, See, we, that's we, unique. I can't imagine that. That's why they. <laughs> that's call why it I was asking an any deer tag. You looked at me like I was stupid. I was like, I've never heard of that. That's cool. Any deer? Yeah. It's a buffet line. Just shoot one. Yeah, yeah. Whatever feels right. Boom, done deal. But okay. I, uh, yeah, the mission, the goal for that trip is to shoot a mule deer buck. That's sick. But so we won't go way down the rabbit hole of this, but when I've never killed a mule deer, but when I think of mule deer, I don't think of Nebraska. Is the population wicked good? Do a lot of people mule deer hunt there? So is that, it's, is that like a hot spot or kind of a sleeper hot spot? It's a it's like a what I well, I don't know if a lot of people consider I, I call states like that like marginal states. So they're states that do have like a particular species, but they're not like a de typically like a destination state. Like Nebraska yeah. does have a lot of over-the-counter tags, so it is like a, a DIY hotspot because you can go there and hunt whitetails or mule deer, but they do have some areas where like the mule deer don't do as good, so they have different rules or like non-residents can't hunt for them in certain like management areas and stuff. But it's uh it's just a really good opportunity I got invited down to do, so I'm taking advantage of it and see what we can do. But yeah, I'm psyched. So it'll be like the first First trip of the fall, right out the gate. First week of September should be lit. I'm psyched, but it's both shooting sick. good. Trying to get all my gear dialed in, you know, normal stuff. But I'm psyched. At least try to get like your mind off of fishing because it's like you got to just go all into that world when it's game yeah. on, you know. So, no, that's what I've been up to though. But what do yeah, you got going? Focusing for us, pink, pink, and I, and Attorney Tuesday, which we can talk about a bit with Sobe. Um, we are fighting for our lives for the championship right now. We yeah. have been so consistently sixth place this year, which is and a good are, finish. It's not a bad finish at no, all. No, but we and haven't it's tough. Like, everywhere. yeah, and it's just I've been telling Pink, I'm like, we just got to splash in a couple second to force, and we'll be good. Well, we have one. I'm gonna tell you, dude. I had a uh, like a pretty solid practice. So I yeah, I, and I, I'm going I, into this like. We're good. I like let's, I let's like go where we're up. going. We're swinging for the fences. We're Sobe. We're trying to catch Chris. He's up on us by 
I think it's eight points right now, but that's very that's very doable. Very two doable. tournaments left, very doable. That's... You go get two top twos, and the last one's Marion, which Sobi and I will not be at. I have a sub for Ryan if he will take him. So yes. we will we will see how it goes. But we need two great finishes, and we could sneak into the championship. Uh, we're gonna go down swinging. But Sobi, what's been going on with you? Well, first I'll say on Sunday. Ryan sent me two Snapchats. This is all I know about your guys' Tourney <laughs> Tuesday going in tomorrow. He sent me two Snapchats. One was, I'm on my... Or, oh, shoot, I won't say that. One <laughs> I'll, is, I'll beep. I'll bleep it. I'll bleep it. One says, <laughs> Someone I'm write on me a lake. note quick. Someone write me a note The term will be over by it. then, dude. Yeah, but one we can't says, tell people our roster area. Oh, shit. That's right. <laughs> one, one Snapchat said, I'm on the lake. Where are you? And the next Snapchat I got was later in the day, and his thumb was just <laughs> shredded to pieces. And I was like, He sent me that, that too. <laughs> and then he's like, And then he's like, Where are you at? Let's go get a bloody. And this was at like <laughs> noon, which leads me to believe he kind of tore it down and he, he was ready to, he's ready to <laughs> move positions <laughs> before Dude, things got too him- good. Cause he was asking me, he's like, dude, I'll probably go there practice. And I told, cause most of the lakes we've been to have been kind of grimy lately. Yeah. And I told him, I'm like, you're going to love this place. And he's like, really? I'm like, it's, you're going to have fun. And he this, went there and he's like, this is awesome. I was yeah. like, I knew you were going to have fun. Like, I'm not going to fight you. Like, and, I will say, here. I will say most of the time, like out of all the tournaments, like in my career that I've fished for, I very seldom like set the hook a lot in practice. But I was mad at him this weekend, dude. And I let him have it. <laughs> it's good to let him have it. Sometimes you gotta Woo! let him have it. <laughs> yeah, One thing, yeah. Ryan, is I, I don't want like I don't know if we've hit lakes at weird times or things. It's just been a tough for year. But like usually Tourney Tuesday is much more fun than it's been this year. I, I promise you. It's just been freaking we've it had has been tough. Claw, it has tooth been tough. and nail to catch catch a bass and then catch another one and then catch another one. It's just been it's just been tough fishing. Sometimes fishing. And Pink gets really and I tough. like catching our whole weight in the last like forty-five minutes. It's a never give up mentality. Yeah. <laughs> and more of us just being like, oh, okay, we caught one. This is what they're doing now. Yeah, yeah. No, I if 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 even it's like half as good as it was this weekend, like I feel very very good that it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, yeah, it should be a good one. But Sobi, what have you been up to? Man, doing a lot of fishing and filming, been bouncing around, doing a lot of different promo and, and media stuff. Um, and then along with that, Tourney Tuesday and, and editing a bunch. But the coolest thing that happened recently was the previous tournament, previous Tourney Tuesday, is Steph the Great caught two smallmouth in our area, which is like... Do so you know of. how many fucking text messages I got about those smallmouth? Yes, dude, right? Isn't that <laughs> like I did. I didn't even catch them, and I got text messages asking where she was. And and the thing is, is, is like, I'm telling everyone too, like we were as surprised as you were. Like, I never <laughs> caught a smallmouth out of there. I told them, I'm I like, still haven't. Still there's haven't. maybe there's maybe seven of them in there. I know you caught two of them. There might have been stuff. two. There might have literally been two. It's, it's weird, but we got to weigh in a mixed bag in the South Metro Minnesota where we're from, and that was like. I don't know. I don't know if it's been done for a long time, but we were pretty fired up about that, and, and we had a good bag to go along with it. So, yeah, hopefully you can keep some momentum rolling. How are you yeah, feeling? This is this is what I want to know here, so we will dive into this yeah. real quick. But how are you feeling rolling into the next Champions Tour event? So th- this will actually come out the day after Lahamadu's done. So we'll know if you're in the championship or yeah. not when this actually airs. You are Bubble Boy. I'm trying – I'm kind of trying not to freak out a little bit because like after the first one, I was like, dude, like the whole goal is to been make the championship because you get to fish for dang $60,000 boat and you get to fish against 25 dudes. Like it's like fishing a Wednesday night or for a $60,000 boat. Like you, you have the opportunity is there. And after the second one, I bombed. Now I'm just like, like Adam said on the bubble, I'm, I'm kind of freaking out. I, I don't know this lake we're going to it's Lahamadu. Um, but I, I kind of like that. I kind of like when I don't have preconceived notions and I can go there. I have enough practice time now. I'm not getting up there late or anything after an eye cast. Yeah, you actually, like that. you built out some practice time this time. Yeah. And I'm really like, I don't know. I'm going to give it all the freaking onions and I'm, I'm freaking actually pretty nervous. <laughs> like I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm nervous because I really want to do good. I'm excited for you for this one because, uh, Lahamadu is, 
I've done very well there in tournaments when I've been there and finished middle of the pack. But like based on your style of fishing, I think you're really going to like it. Like it's a okay. fun lake, but there is that chain might have more bass in it than anywhere I've ever seen. Um, really? It's very cool. Yeah. There was MLF events there last year and they posted it. It's also called the Alexandria uh, chain of lakes. Uh, MLF okay. had some stuff there. But yeah, it's super fun. You should have a good time. But yeah, curious to hear how you were feeling. So that's cool to hear. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm just I'm ex- <laughs> ready to I, rumble. I don't even want to like I honestly don't I'm even terrified. want to talk about it. I'm freaking out. Like I don't want to talk about it. I just I gotta get in there, beat Noah Schultz in the championship, do what I came to do, and then go home happy. There you go. Do that. Do that. <laughs> do that. Start yeah. there. <laughs> so obviously I wasn't at the last episode. That's because I was up north. Um, for me lately, it has been tournament season. So heavy tournament season went up to did we record before when I went to state for leech? I think we did. Leech yeah. Yeah, state? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So I went to leech for state, came home for a few days, and then just went up to Pacagama for the team final team trail event. Uh Knew we needed to knew we just needed a top 30 to make the championship, which I mean, honest over the years has not been very difficult, but this year's field is very, very good. Oh yeah. Um, but I have done very well in Pacagama before practice was really, really, really good. Like I was really excited and it wasn't like I was catching some big ones. I was running multiple patterns. I had hooks cut off for a lot of it. I was doing stuff other people weren't doing um i was very excited and ended up just honestly dropping the ball um lost a four pounder at the end of the net at about 12 30 uh lost a three pounder early in the morning but i was like oh whatever it's a three pounder you're gonna need 20 pounds to compete here then then you decide to go all for all for smallmouth well yeah (laughs) in practice yeah yeah because dude so we spent basically all practice smallmouth fishing because we're like, we're going to try to win. Well, dude, it's 1130. I have two smallmouth in my live well. Two. And Voight looks at me and he's like, dude, let's just go fish these reeds real quick and get a few fish to like, like just settle down. Yeah. And because I had started burning around pretty hot and heavy. I was like, yeah. I'm just going to run and find one that wants to eat. I have 40 spots out here I want to hit. I'm just going to But everybody everybody reaches one. that point when when it's like mid morning and you don't have five. You can it seems like you can Especially have Especially in Minnesota. Five. In yeah. Minnesota cuz it's Minnesota. very easy to get five before 9 o'clock in Minnesota. Usually. Um, usually. usually. Yeah. And it was not um but we went up to some reeds, caught a couple, and then I, I went out to another area that I've done very well on, and I ran into Mr. Andy Nichols, and he was like, how's it going? I was like, dude, train wreck, awful. I have, I was like, we don't even have a limit. Then I set the hook on one. It was a little largemouth randomly, throw it in the well, and he was like, I was like, how's your day going? He's like, fantastic. I have more than last year. The last time we were there, he took four. So I was like, Andy smashed oh. And he like kind of talked to me a little bit. He's like, dude, chill out. Just you're going to be fine. Um, But we kind of started fishing around. And yeah, like I said, so then I ended up hooking that four that I'm bringing to the net and Voight goes to net it and just the hook pops right out. Like it didn't even shake or jump or anything. The hook just popped right out and just swam away slowly. And then uh, about three casts later, I had, I don't even know how big it was. I had a giant grab the back end of a fluke. Like I was fluking one back in shallow water and I watched him grab it and take off with it. And I was like, oh my God, that's like a five and a half. And he just didn't grab my hook. Like he just grabbed the, he just grabbed the fluke and just took off. And I, this is, this is, this is gone. I was like, oh, that sucks. And then it was one o'clock. We check in at three. It was one thirty. We check in and with three and we're at 11 and a half pounds. And me and Voight, I was like, dude, I'm audible. Like, if we're going to make this, we're going to go earn it. We're not just going to sit here and try to milk for some fish. Yeah. Ran to a spot, caught a four-pounder in my, like, second cast. Ran to a couple other spots. Ended up getting another four-pounder. And then for the last 40 minutes, we're just trying. Trying to get one more. I knew we needed one more for the top 30. Um, And, yeah. We with five minutes left, I ran to a rock. I thought I'd maybe seen an August spawner on. Believe it or not, it was not there. 
<laughs> so uh yeah we ran in ended up finishing 40th and by now the points will be released for everybody they were finalizing the points that's a meeting i was just on okay. uh, cuz their system failed yesterday when they were trying to update everyone for the who, championship who won the points well it's not over cuz oh, the okay. championship counts for points but me and voit finished two spots out of making it oh three, three places that's so if we even landed that three pounder in that morning, we probably oh. would have snuck in. Damn. So yeah, it was it was just a year of a lot of lost fish, and today hurt a lot to be honest. Because this is the first year I missed the championship. This is the first year I finished below top ten in that circuit. Um, and from starting the year at such a high with like Kentucky and the river and stuff going really yeah. good, to kind of watch it just slowly start crashing and burning. Uh, to be here now is why we bass fish. It's the most like, well, humbling sport it's in the world. Get dude. better eventually. It's part of yeah. the game, right, boys? Oh, for sure. But then, uh, yeah, I but like, dude, Dane and Teal weighed in twelve pounds. They finished <laughs> like fortieth in points. I can't and, believe and- it. They're way better bass fisher than fishermen than I am. But yeah, that's what's been going on with me. Now we got a lot of little bit of a lot of bit of filming actually coming up, but should be fun. It'll be a Hell good yeah. time. We got Tourney Tuesday, but uh, do you well, want to run got, into do you want to run into what in the world's going on, Pink? We'll do that real quick, and then we'll I, rip everything else out with our guest. Well, or do we bring in our guest for what's in the world? I think we're gonna bring in our guest for this because we we can get her opinion on some of these some of these things that are going down in the we'll world of the outdoors. We'll, we'll drum roll, we'll drum roll, please, for a yeah, special so, guest. We're excited we'll, about this one. We'll bring in our special guest this week, uh, Maggie Carcello, coming to you live right here from the from oh, the bass cave. I wow. want a round of applause clap from around the square right here. Come on! All right, yeah, yeah, yep, there it is. Golf yeah, clap. a little bit of Sam said to bring uh, to grab some corn, so I did. Ooh, running the corn cans. <laughs> I like for it. the farmers. <laughs> Maggie, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Just happy to be here. Thanks it's been a me. while. It's been way too long. Yeah, been what's been going? What's been going on in your life? What do you got going on lately? We saw you smashing Sobe with like a cupcake of yeah. some level <laughs> at ICAST, but it's a other trend, than that, okay. is that that's what Obviously. the cool kids are doing? I, I feel like I feel like before we go any farther, and Maggie answers that we have to properly introduce her. This is Maggie Carcello. She is a Wisconsin native. She's a large influence powerhouse when it comes to the outdoors. And anything to do angling or hunting or anything underneath the sun. And she's extremely witty, funny, great following. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm yeah, honored. Hopefully you can come and breathe some life into this podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. It's going to take a lot more than that, but I'll try. No, Ooh, yeah. there it is. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. Here we go. Uh, oh, here we go. Like Jesse Thank Baker. You. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah. No. And. I could be wrong here. You guys all went to college, right? College together. We did. Yeah. So this is just the class of people and seeing where they are in the outdoor industry (laughs) that were at Stevens point (laughs) at that point in time is actually ridiculous. It puts out that you mention it because we got Maggie there too. Welcome to the Thunderdome boys. (laughs) Welcome to the (laughs) Thunderdome. So I guess maybe, maybe we can start there. What did you, what did you major in at Stevens point again? I think I know, but I just want you. Yeah, so I went there in hopes of becoming a physical education teacher. Could you see that? Oh, yeah, baby. I, yeah, Get yeah. on the line, boy. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> so why. I, I went there to be a physical education teacher. I did that for four years. It was my senior year that I was like, I don't know if I see myself in a school setting for the rest of my life. And, yeah. I mean, that was my senior year. So I was like, all right, so what do I get a degree in with the least – credits possible (laughs) how can i not be here for how do i get out (laughs) yeah no but truthfully i at that point i really was starting to like i've fished my whole life but i kind of saw like that i was really enjoying that like from a social media standpoint and was starting to kind of create more connections with that so i wound up uh graduating with a degree in communication like it it was broad but it didn't take a ton more credits and i thought it was you know, just kind of, I could do whatever with that, whether that be like a lot of people will go into marketing or like PR or stuff yeah. like that. So 
I graduated yep. with a degree in communication. Yeah. So what year did you graduate then? Because that was back around when like Sobe, you had gone to do the Guggen stuff. Like that's right when the social media phishing trend and YouTube trend started like accelerating, right? Yeah, I suppose I graduated in May of 2018 and bringing that uh, part of Sam's life up is kind of a a touchy subject for me because he had actually just talked me into joining the uh, Bass team there and then was like, hey, welcome, but uh, peace out. I'm I'm actually out. I'm out of here. So I went to like one meeting. I always say I was on the UWSP Bass team, but I I went to like one meeting. (laughs) That's yeah. okay. He did the same thing with me. We decided we were going to film all these ice fishing videos for the winter with Team Yukon Outdoors, and he'd filmed like six episodes a year before. And then he, in October, he's like, "By the way, Adam, here's the here's the camera and the editing software. You're doing it. I'm out." He's I'm out. like, "What? I haven't I even do. touched this." Man, he, back back when we were in school, that was still like kind of the wild west of of college fishing, and I really I really wish like we even had our ducks in a row more and we did have our ducks in a row more than a lot of other schools, but like even just feeling comfortable and coming in and fishing the club. Like I wish that was something you could have done for like th- three years or four years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but hindsight 2020, you're fishing a bunch of derbs now and you're doing a bunch of sweet stuff now. Like it's fine, but like, but I, will I wish, say, hey, I wish we talked about this last week and me, Sobe and Hunter are going to take it upon ourselves to make the alumni tournament the biggest Ooh. party in the Midwest uh, yeah. in the years moving forward. So we'll definitely need your assistance in the uh, planning of this uh, banger, if you will. We'll get Consider a go. Fun- <laughs> we'll get a GoFundMe started and make it presented by Pass the Barp. Yeah, we're gonna. This will be huge. It's gonna be a big deal. Yeah, it's gonna be a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. No, so I will what- say. Oh, sorry. No, no, you go ahead. I was just going to say, this is going to make me sound like a boomer, but like, it is crazy. Like, I wish I would have known. I don't think my high school had a team or anything and like how late it took me to get involved with the college stuff, which I really didn't even get involved with it, but it's really cool. Like seeing how that stuff's taking off. I mean, my high school now has a fishing team and that's crazy. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, imagine the hammer I'd be if I did that stuff back in the day, you know? That's what I'm saying. Like even like all these high schoolers now that are fishing all these tournaments or have these opportunities and stuff. Same deal. We didn't have any of that either. We didn't have a team. I don't. I don't know if our school has a team now, but every school seems like they, they have funding. They have team. They have captains. They have coaches. They've got a lot. It's growing. It's cool. Our our team was raw. Like (laughs) we didn't have any direction or like managers or coaches or any of it. You guys had Ted Johnson leading you. Come on. you're right how can i forget (laughs) (laughs) shout out to ted love you buddy (laughs) so should we should we get into what's going on in the world yeah yeah we can rip into that and then we'll then we'll get maggie's thoughts on everything yeah yeah let's start start with ryan and then and then maggie can go right after ryan because i want to i want to hear what maggie's going on in the world it's not just your world just things you've heard or seen or what's going on we'll break this down for it, you may not be an active listener to pass the bar, but well, I've been your biggest fan since I knew I was coming on here. But <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have, if you don't have a little a little badge, we're not even going to talk. So, oh, but, give me give me like a week. <laughs> but uh, basically, we're just we, we go out and like find stuff that's going on in the outdoor industry that's like rel- relevant to like right now. So I got one, two actually that uh, I thought were pretty interesting. One. Cause we've been talking about like a lot of these freaking um, all the poaching bullshit all the time. But this one was like uh, in Michigan, this just came up. They're talking about changing some rules. So they're talking about, uh, so Michigan, they ban using drones for hunting and like some fishing applications, I guess. But now that's being challenged. So there's a, a guy in Michigan who runs a business using drones to find like wounded deer or like he's like a game recovery guy that uses drones and uh the michigan like fishing game is kind of like pushing back because he's saying that by them changing these rules they're like ruining his business basically but other people are viewing like this drone thing as being like live scope for hunting basically that people are using like thermal imaging and being able to like find animals and like use it to like like strategize hunting so they obviously want to make it like illegal so like you can't just use it to go hunt or whatever but I didn't even know people were doing this drone, like, game recovery business, which I think is kind of badass, actually. Yeah. That they're using, Maggie, like, have, you, have you seen that or heard about that? 
No, I haven't. I was just, I, you know, I can see, I was nodding like that. Cause I can see why, of course <laughs> you don't want to use it for like the hunting, but I think that's really cool for recovery. I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't want, but I guess it's where do you draw the line? Like, Oh, we were trying what? to recover. Well, yeah. I think but that's like, it, right? They're saying like, yeah. how do you differentiate like who can right. and who can't or whatever? Because right. a lot of states at least have some rules that say like you can't hunt with a drone. But like beyond that, it's not like it's very gray area around it. But this is like the first article I ever seen about it. And mm -hmm. Michigan yeah. is not a place that I would have thought it was going to come up either. Well, dude, that's something like fishing wise. So when drones first came out and everything, it got written in fishing tournament rules pretty early. And I had one. I never did it. Uh, but I, the rule ended up coming up, but I very, very highly debated. There was a bed tournament instead of me going around using a flogger or anything, I could just put my drone up and fly around a flat. And if I found some, I could just drive over to it and be like, here they are. So it, there is a level of that. But um, I say like, so there how, is a rule written in draw bed line. tournaments. Yeah. yeah. Cause like, There's what if you're not on the, what if you're not actively fishing? And just yeah. And that's just tournament that. wise. So like it was even a thing. Sylvie, I know you remember this when you were filming Joel and stuff at the opens. If you were in the tournament as a co-angler and it was official yeah. practice, you could not fly a drone over tournament waters. And we, I had media passes. I had everything. I had all these different credentials that I could film and fly all this stuff. But it's like, if it, yeah, I, they they like freaked out because they thought I was flying the drone in the tournament. And it, all the shots came after the tournament or all the shots came way before practice. That's wild. So, yeah. People freak yeah. out about it. Big so we'll see. I mean, I think it's going to be very similar to like the live scope topic over the next, you know, year or two about the, how people are using and what's legal and what's not. But it was, it was interesting that it was like a, like it was a news article that was just like, Hey, like Michigan's doing this. Maggie, you should look up some of those YouTube videos, like deer recovery, thermal drone. It's actually, they're incredible. The video, the, it's nuts. These guys just hover everywhere and they just boom, there's your deer. They lost blood two days ago. This dude finds it like it's nuts. Yeah. And it's like, it's like pretty high tech shit. Like it's not just like some dude with a little like $20 drone. So I can see how they're like pissed about it, but all right. So this other one, uh, this is a Wisconsin one. So, Hey, you know, so this guy, uh, around lacrosse area, I guess. And I guess this happened early. This was actually last fall, but I guess all of the, you know, bs finally got wrapped up of like the legal stuff out of it but a guy around the La lacrosse shot this big buck during archery season with a rifle oh. obviously you can't do that um and yeah. how did he, he get caught it. because because <laughs> he bullet hole <laughs> because he, he entered the buck in like five deer competitions like big buck contests yeah. <laughs> after he poached it during archery season and then of course they did an investigation and found that it was actually shot with a rifle they're like that's Idiot. a bullet hole <laughs> yeah well and you know they had like all this other like evidence to back it up too like i i think you know because he probably had like videos and like pictures and all this bs of him like with it with the deer um but yeah so he he entered yeah. it in there and then of course he got like disqualified from all these like big buck contests if you know anything about these these are not like high profile like this isn't like the bass master classic right where there's like a hundred grand on the line there was probably like people probably bar like, league stuff five, yeah, yeah. like five dollars at the at the sporting goods store to be like hey like let's you know whatever but, but at the same uh, token wisconsin does not play around when it comes to deer hunting at all that's like, true like that's like true. not at all. It's not a freaking joke. It is not a pastime. It is. But, but here's the thing. Holiday I, tradition. <laughs> and I thought the same thing. Right. And I'm like, okay, well maybe this guy was just like, he really wanted to shoot this deer and he's just like, okay. And then he entered it, you know, <laughs> but then you come to find out this buck is probably one of the biggest bucks shot in Wisconsin that last year. Oh. It <laughs> scored 218, and he poached it right before, you know, before gun season so i mean i'm like, i'm not saying i would have done the same thing or anything but well i'm just saying if you're gonna like, <laughs> like why do you get you're, so you're gonna you're gonna poach like arguably one of the biggest bucks in the state that year and then submit it to a whole bunch of like photo contests with like <laughs> idiot it kills you is the this the one that, that buck that it wasn't there a giant buck last year that honor brought up that they totally deer drove or something like that. Wasn't there an article we talked about on the podcast going back further? 
I, the there, to fall. There's always like every season. There's always crazy stuff that happens like that. And people think they can get away well, with it. The one that Hunter brought up was that the lady who shot those elk. That was, was what it was. Still one of the best stories. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, which happens like every couple of years in wisconsin it's mind-blowing speaking of honor <laughs> uh-oh uh-oh <Thank> buddy <laughs> let's, let's do around the table applause for Cody yeah, Cody. yeah, look, yeah. Your special guest this week mister said i will not be here tonight all of a sudden goes i am free he's back yikes <laughs> he was all I like my, gir- my girl's coming to town don't bother me with these shenanigans don't bother and then, me and then with he's like yo hoopla. let me get that link yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it the rib mountain buck is what <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna divert rib mountain buck is what i was talking about before. okay all right yeah, yeah. okay yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'll so roll I'd, someone else here instead. You can deflect like, the comments, just deflect them yeah. away. Yeah, I mean, so we'd probably be done by now. If, if why'd she break up so with late. you, and why can you be here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. That is true. I was very late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll continue. All right, so I got, I got, I got a what in the world's going on. Right, yeah. Um, and I, I'm actually happy Honors here because I think he'll be able to dive into this one too. Um, so little, oh not God. poaching scandal or anything, but, uh, Auburn. So the winner of the college national champ- championship for bass fishing, uh, BASS bass masters was, um, last week and Tucker Smith won it with his partner. Um, I was paying attention in this event also cause Easton and father Gill was there. I fish against Easton and the Minnesota bass nation team trail. Easton's an unbelievable hammer. He just won uh angler of the year uh team of the year for it being from grand rapids minnesota he finished fifth there but yeah tucker smith won it and if that name doesn't ring a bell to you so in the last three years uh tucker smith was a part of the team that won the million dollar bass tournament that was the johnny morris tournament on was it table rock or lake of the yeah it was table rock table rock yeah so he won that and then this year in the opens at ufala there was a major scandal with mm-hmm. him, uh, with potential holes sitting and stuff like that. He had a right. weights DQ'd one day or something. We actually then, talked about that on here. Yes, we did. And now he wins the college national champ national champion. So did he win the bracket as well? Or just this was just the team national championship. Okay. So they just figured out the seedings for the bracket. Easton will be fishing in that bracket too. Yeah. Wow. Uh, since he won team of the year. So yeah, they finalized that. I think it's crazy cool. I don't know. I got, like, I'm not bringing light on it to be like, oh, Tucker's doing anything shady because um, of what happened at the Open. But it's just crazy. The dude's won, so, like, dude won a million dollars. Regardless, he's yeah. He won a million dollars as a sophomore a in yeah. college when That's he won crazy. that tournament. Could you I imagine? will say, though, that <laughs> no. bracket, that no. bracket is, like, the <laughs> sickest part of college fishing. Like, sure. I wish, like, hell I could have competed in that. Mm-hmm. Did you like did you so ever get close to that, Cody, when you were fishing college? Did you almost make the bracket? <laughs> well, we're gonna cut this one short. I'm not gonna tell a long story, but uh um yeah, luckily my partner Mark um knew how to delete files on a GoPro because things were set in that boat on on day two of the national championship that uh yeah, I don't think I would have been allowed back into uh, Bassmaster if they're if Hank Weldon saw. Him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I remember Wes Miller, like the first day. I think we were sitting in third or second, and then the next day we had we had Wes in our boat, and I'm like, oh, this is probably like watching a bad TV show. He's like, no, no, it's kind of like filming one. I'm like, oh, you thought. <laughs> 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 like, oh, thanks. Okay. All right. I will say though, dude, we had we had a, a big push like that we we should have had multiple teams in that. The one year they actually brought the national championship to our home water. Literally yeah. because they were like, Well, you a bunch of you guys are gonna be in it then. And we all missed qualifying for it. Yeah. We we threw a prop here. A half a mile away from the landing and we're late to qualify for it yeah. on Dubay and then on Stevens Point. 
Like on the way back, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, I'm going to the classic. Absolutely. hundred percent. No, no, not the case. <laughs> not like the that case. shit was just brutal. another tale. And there's and then we the had to work of Cody Honor and I and, and the other fear failure to avoid hey, him and, from winning. And Cody didn't come because I'm pretty sure he was completely blackout at that point. But we yeah. had to work like the booth because they they hosted the uh, tournament at point. It was like, even on campus. It yeah. was and we worse. all had to sit there fucking just taking it from everybody asking why we weren't fishing in this goddamn thing and they're like interviewing us for the newspaper and stuff about how we didn't make it into the tournament mm -hmm. it was it's it, dude it was worse <laughs> i was i was working my summer job and we were renovating watson and thompson hall so i would go to quick trip which was like right next to the jimmy johns and starbucks i would go there every day and see all my buddies from the south with their boats and they're like where are you going I'm like to work they're like oh <laughs> you're not fishing i'm like nope nope oh, <laughs> going to God, work dude. going to the shit construction job yeah was that do you guys remember like the tiki bar or whatever tiki beach on lake the bay yeah well, yeah. yeah was that tournament like out of there or like maybe no. not out of there but some because i worked there and i remember a bunch of like college bass guys coming in there and i was well, like this just... is awesome they might have just went there, but the like they hosted oh, okay. it. It was on like right in front. It was in on campus, like right in front of the big mural okay. thing. Mm -hmm. What? Like that All big? Right. Well, anyway. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah they I just, just like, remember. Had, they I remember the them giving me right uh, like a Toyota Bassmaster hat, and I was like, "This is the best day <laughs> ever." <laughs> it was the not best the best tip day. I got all day. Well, yeah, not for you guys. I heard it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah that's that's the what in the world i had going on soby do you have any um well i guess straight up the world uh there's there's a giant writer's strike in hollywood i kind of want to know your guys thoughts <laughs> on that since that since we're in like media two months ago didn't it no it's still going on okay. but then well, I just, it also i'm gonna say i've been largely unaffected i feel like um <laughs> that maybe i might not be the best person to ask that to no, but here's where I'm kind of going with this is like there's a giant writer strike in Hollywood. That's been happening. It's still happening. And then there's been a strike in like every sport ever. You know what I mean? Over over the years. Mm -hmm. Would it like would it be crazy if there was like a bass fishing strike? Like if they didn't like how the opens were and there was like no. what if all the anglers went on strike or what if yeah, what if there I mean, was a strike in the outdoors? Could you they could basically you see it? did. They basically did, they just left. They just yeah. went to MLF. Have you heard of MLF? I guess that's their their version <laughs> of a strike. In a I way. Guess, yeah. That's, that's because they're all too big of gambling addicts <laughs> and need their need their tourney fix. They're like, well, we, we can't possibly stop for a year. So we'll just <laughs> go somewhere else. I just love giving away money. <laughs> Boatloads, <laughs> wagonfuls of money. I just don't think this the anglers have like hat. enough enough leverage on their side to just be like what are you going to do No, And like, the, <laughs> I think they do though. Cause I feel like I the know. anglers and the, like, obviously the anglers are the ones that are fishing tournaments, but like a lot of these tournaments, at least on the opens level, like Cody was saying, like, or other people have said like the opens fund a lot of these, you know, like the elites yeah. and stuff like that. So like, mm -hmm. I think the anglers have all the leverage. I don't think these, these corporations like a Bassmaster or MLF have that much nom endemics that it's like, these anglers all just up and left for a year, they'd be like, Oh, I mean, well, I, I think, I think there's so many kids nowadays who are willing to bankrupt themselves just yeah. for the shot to be on the elite series that if they all left, they'd be like, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll, like, this okay, is, this we'll is my moment. Before, we'll go so. get the other 200 that are dumb enough to go. Yes. Bankrupt. Yes. Give us money. And guess what? Those 200 go on strike. We'll get the next 200. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Has has Andrew know. ever thought about it, Maggie? Going for the open? You want me to go get him? No, no, no. <laughs> no so like, does no. he talk about? Does no, he talk about your it? interview? <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. We've actually we've talked about um, like doing it as a like Lincoln, so that I could do it as a co for a little bit too, to just like yeah. learn some stuff and travel together and whatnot. But I mean, I have four dollars, so. Um, yeah, just, you just like need the a rest loan. of us. You just need a loan. You ever heard of a credit card? Get you some debt. Yeah, you those know? are maxed out. 
<laughs> I, I do no, think no, you, you just keep adding going, credit like, cards. Yeah, you just get more. There's so many yeah. more credit card companies than you think there are. Every time I go to Cabela's, they're like, you have a club card? I'm like, yep. And they go, you can open more than one. I'm like, don't tell me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was my what's going on in the world. Maybe it no. wasn't a great one. It was That's good. Fine. I see where you're going with that. Yeah. But I just, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to yeah. get your thoughts. It was good effort. Good effort. And uh, Maggie, I'm guessing no one asked you to bring anything, so that's fine. No, but but I saw something on Instagram, so I have no context for this, but I have one. This is perfect. We like this. We love we like stuff this. with no like, context this is be short that we know nothing about. So I remember yeah. like the the headline of the article, and then like what they got you with. Oh, have you guys yeah. seen that recently? There was a woman that got attacked by a hawk, <laughs> and I shouldn't laugh. A hawk. And a snake at the same time. No. Have you guys been served at the this? Same time. That, what state? Then, first like, off, what state is Monday. this? I don't Florida. know. See, that's why Florida. Like, Florida. 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 <laughs> Florida. And then the like the little like tagline to really get you was first she felt the fangs, then she felt the talons, and I was like, Come Whoa. on! Whoa. I saved. I saved it. I was like, I gotta see this later. Dude, this I'm looking it up right now. Sure. I feel like Dead. this definitely leads into a, a Pinkala story, I would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it kind of does. It kind of does. And I did bring it up before, so I'll say it. A 64-year-old Texas it, woman experienced yeah, a nightmarish animal attack on July 25th while mowing her lawn. Oh, Peggy. Peggy Jones was simultaneously attacked by a snake and a hawk. <laughs> Jones has <laughs> said, hey, don't laugh. I just texted Simon you guys the article. Oh, just we can look, laugh. Look at the cover photo of the article I just texted you. It's the article. What town is this in? Oh, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Jones has since recovered from the terrifying incident, but says she still thinks about it most nights. <laughs> I love what in the a- photo she has the cast with a snake. I want to see. On her arm. Like, she's still I holding it up. Snake. No, I, is she like a... A hawk person, you know, one that like I don't know sends them out. They fly hawks, and then she, I mean, what the? <laughs> a falcon. Just a terrible oh. Monday at work. Okay, I will. Say, this Monday. picture, dude, she's literally holding a live rattlesnake. Oh, <laughs> she. So Peggy was asking for. Yeah, what you're telling me. This is like a, right. she has a cast on her arm, and she's holding a rattlesnake. Yeah, uh, I wish you guys wouldn't have looked into it. It was cooler no, when we didn't know as much. No, no, I like it. I, I'm honestly picturing like. The news reporter that walks into Superior's office that Monday and he's like, uh, just listen. Hear me out. Attacked by Hawk after Snake falls from Sky lands on her. Do <laughs> I have the story of the week or what? <laughs> and they were like, they were like, Wait, one and then the other. He's like, no, simultaneous attack. <laughs> Sounds like an excuse I'd use to get out of work. Sounds like Hunter, you got a new one. Yeah. Peggy yeah. was at the casino a little late and she's like, no, this hawk and the snake came at me. <laughs> I was just out in the yard. No, I got mine's always explosive diarrhea. They can't tell you you're lying about that. That is true. That's, That's so valid. true. Anyway. Prove like it. That. Dang, that was a good one, Maggie. <laughs> yeah, yeah is it for, for not being warned about this. That was good. Thank you. No, that was that was perfect. Right, Connor, gonna, do you I'll, have anything or are you good? I, I'm gonna I bring up this one. story. Let go, me bring up this story because it. it's relevant now and then it won't be. So I was telling oh, Sam yeah. this before, and I te- I texted Bart this, and he said nothing back. So I was just like, whatever, fuck you then. <laughs> but I was so I, when I was fishing, I was fishing this weekend, and I was I was fishing a frog, and I was in this area, and there was like just like a lot of birds around. So there was like a tree of all these like vultures. There's all these geese like chilling, and I was like sending snaps. I was like, this is crazy. Like look at all this shit, and then. I'm throwing this frog across this uh, like lily pads or whatever. And I see this hawk just like flying around. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. It's just like a small hawk. And then I'm like not really paying attention. I'm just like working my frog. And then it's like, you know how when like, you get bit when you're frogging and you're not like watching. And then eventually you're just like, oh, I just set the hook because like I feel something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like doing that. And then I'm like working the frog. But I went I was about to swing on it. But my line is like straight up and this hawk had like swooped it down and just grabbed my frog off the mat and was like flying away. So my line That's is incredible. like straight up in the goddamn air. And I was like, well, I don't want to just like rip it down because like, I don't know if I'm like hook this thing. And then what am I going to do with a hawk? You know what I'm saying? So I just like I was free spooling it, figuring it would just like let go. But I was like running out of line. So I started thumbing the spool and Sam disagreed with me on this point, 
but I was thumbing the spool and eventually the line just broke and I did reel in like most of my line. So I don't know. If I didn't just read just- you. I wasn't sure if like the tension broke it or like, his I don't know, dude. It. I don't know. But long story short, Hawk stole my frog. I got to go to the frog store. So. That's pretty badass. Right. You broke off a, broke off a Hawk. I think I I think I can one up you here. I had a co angler drown a falcon that was on my <laughs> on my whopper plopper a one falcon. time. A falcon oh. in Washington D.C. on the Potomac. Oh my oh, like that's got to be a federal offense. God, <laughs> it, it was it was the cruelest thing I've ever seen. He's like, well, do you want the do you want the bait back or what? So like, he did it like with his hands. No, 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 no. He took the net out <laughs> and he's like, well, there's only one option. What the, the way he, the way he said it was priceless he's like well we only have one option <laughs> and drown this thing and it's like in the net like going, going nuts and i am horrified like, oh, for sure. look yeah. away oh, what you're not, not even watch try honor's <laughs> like dude it's just a shaky head bro oh like, <laughs> it's it's a little baby whopper popper we're good we're good he's like well here's your bait back and he just like <laughs> just like flushes it down the river, like I'm sure you know. He's done this before. I'm like, <laughs> for, for, for. He's like he's like he's just a falcon. Well, Maybe. we won't talk about that one. I'm like, yeah, you're probably you should be in jail. <laughs> like, <laughs> so how did, did you, you how did you battle this falcon to the boat to get it in the net? Uh, well, I was I was just casting like underneath some trees or whatever, and I'm like looking away, looking for like the next target, and all of a sudden my line is taken off, and I don't I have it engaged, so it hooked itself and fell into the water, and it couldn't oh it couldn't God. fly, and the guy's like, "Whew, is that a bird?" <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, that's no, a bird. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I got a bird. He's like, "Oh, that's that's like an os. Awesome, what is that?" I'm like, a hawk, a falcon? I, I don't know. He's like, yeah, I think it's a falcon. <laughs> <laughs> what was the conversation or or the vibes like in the boat like 10 minutes after? Oh, after it kind of like, because obviously that's a lot of high, like, but 10 minutes later, it's calm, you're all casting. You just kind of look at each other like, no yeah, speaking. Yeah, that, that, guy, that guy definitely was like, you know, some, I don't know. He's killed people. He's yeah. killed people. No, how much, I mean, how much boat? How much boat gas did he give you money? At the I end gave of me the a day? ton. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> he gave at me, the like, end of the day, he's like, so, so we're good, right? For what I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Murdering that endangered species on, For you. in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Thank you. Thank I you. feel like that stuff happens more than people talk about. Them. Oh, like, yeah. Birds and that kind of thing. Yeah. Because I've only I'm... had a few instances of that. But, like, they're very memorable, right? Like the only other ones that I vividly remember were like in Mexico, like hooking pelicans, like mm-hmm. on a big, like they chase your fish. You're like reeling it in and they're like trying to get it and they get like hooked in the wing and you can't get it off and you just cut it. Yeah. And they have like this big, like four ounce lead. So they can't fly and you just watch them like drift away on the tide. And you're like, it's been real. <laughs> like, no, nothing we can do, bro. That's, that's <laughs> me. Aaron. My neighbor Aaron and I were out muskie fishing on Waconia one year in November, and we had a cormorant that was around us, and mm. we had a sucker out, and all of a sudden, Bobber goes down, set the hook. We're like, yeah, hell yeah, here we go, musky time. And he was and all of a sudden, it starts up. coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it comes up like it's going to jump, and oh it starts god. flying. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, oh my god. It's a, At least it was a, a cormorant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got it in, got the hooks out of it and everything. Threw it back, thing flew away. But oh it was, that was God. nuts. Ever so seen you didn't, a bobber you didn't go down just, and see it go fly? You didn't think to just drown it, eh? No, I did not. <laughs> drown it. I, I mean, now that you that Adam's that. an oh, actual that person. Weird. <laughs> that that wasn't even like the craziest one I've seen. I've I've watched I watched Phil Schweik's tournament partner in a musky tournament hook a bald eagle. No. I am not joking. He was like burning his bucktail and looking at Phil, and all of a sudden, yeah, like comes <laughs> out and gra- grabs this thing, and they all you see are wings and talons like going at him, and Phil is like as far back into the boat as he can, <laughs> and the guy's like pulling on this eagle, <laughs> a lo- no. a, like a full grown bald eagle, and he's pulling on it, and he's like, Here, get the pliers, get the pliers. He's like, no, absolutely not, <laughs> no. Absolutely. no. 
and they're like pulling and finally the hook just popped out and the ego just sat there and just kind of swam to shore but it was like (laughs) flying 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 (laughs) came down and grabbed a buck and this guy's mind is like i'm gonna get this to the boat and then we'll deal with it (laughs) (laughs) could you imagine (laughs) no no Never, dude. That's the, that's the like a, that like that ever happens to me. Yeah. That's an immediate. Hey, hand me the scissors. Yeah, <laughs> right. I just remember hearing the splash and then like commotion. I look over across the lake. It was on Duck Lake on the Eagle River chain, and I can just see splashing and screaming and yelling at each other. Yeah, bald eagle, full grown <laughs> bald eagle, right in front of the Wild Eagle Lodge on Duck Lake. <laughs> Fitting. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, that's good shit. It was impressive. But anyway, yeah, yeah anyway, we yeah. died. Anyways, anyways, uh, are we going to pink? Are we rolling into fantasy picks or we just want to chat with Maggie? Yeah, we can we can we can burn picks real quick. I don't think we got to get into it too much. Um, I think we're still well on our way to uh, accumulating points here for everybody involved. Uh, Maggie, I know you've been doing fantasy fishing on and off pretty hardcore, um, but. I, I don't think you're even in our group, so thanks for that. I'm not. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so let's. you want to just burn through everybody's picks? You guys got them up? Yeah, so we're is, doing Champlain. This is, yep, Lake mm-hmm. Champlain. Uh, it's literally in two days. So, uh, Holy I'll, spirit. I'll, so I'll run mine quick. I got. This will be uh, funny because this will come out post-Champlain. So. Oh, yeah, so you'll know how bad we actually did. Um. So I've pretty much fallen off the radar fantasy fishing here. So at least I have nothing to lose. So I went through, I got Jay Shakur at Cooper Gallant. Cause I was kind of hyped on how he fished at uh, the last one. Uh, and then I picked Gussie Taku and then Caleb Kufal to round it out there. I like it. It's That's a solid good. lineup. Honor, do you have yours? I do. I do. You go into it. Cause I'm going to try to add up points from the last <laughs> event to see where we're at on the fly. All right. Uh, mine's very vanilla, very white. Um, so a bucket, Brandon Polnick. I mean that like anybody would pick that, um, B Cooper Gallant. Um, I know he fishes Champlain quite a bit and he's a small mouth hammer. C Austin Felix, just cause I know him well enough. Um, and he's fished Champlain a ton. So he knows it very well. Greg De Palma. Um, New Jersey boy fishes Champlain a lot. I feel like this is a coming out tournament for him this year. And then E, I got to go with Joshy, uh, Josh Douglas in bucket E. Feel like Dude, it's his time to have a good event, and this is a, a place that lineup. sets up for him really well. Solid lineup. That this Cooper Gallant guy. Do you know he's much about him? Because I I didn't he's, really know too much. About him. But this dude, unbelievable swag on live, dude. Unreal. Mm-hmm. I was like. This is my boy right here. Got the accent, whole nine yards. All of it, dude. He's the full package. Yep. That's it. Boy stays the same, same accent. Love it. Mm. Big fan. I have the points update, and Hunter will be excited to hear this. And Sobe, you need to get into our group so that uh, (laughs) you can be involved in the who has to run a turkey trot. Someone should probably get a hold of Will in Alaska and maybe let him know to set his lineup or (laughs) – I no. texted everybody, dude. Yeah, we might want to try to get a hold of him again to help out, but Honor will be very pumped to hear this. So, after uh, St. Clair, Honor actually won St. Clair. Well done, sir. So, second at St. Clair was me, and then Pinkala was third, and Stolsky was fourth. Once again, Sobe is not in the group, so I cannot see it. So, if Sobe keeps passing this off, maybe we'll have two people running the turkey trial. No, no, no I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it next year. I want to be in full tilt next year. That's just join the goddamn. Excuse we're gonna retro that's, that's because, because he hasn't. Of the year. He hasn't. No, there's two events left. He hasn't said it all year, so he'll definitely be last. But uh, right now in points, we got Pink in the lead. He's up to eleven now. After starting winning literally the first six events. Wow. So uh, he's 2 11. We're doing golf scoring as a reminder. So winner gets lowest, but he's at 11. I am at 19. Then we have got Honor in third with 24. Yes. Ooh. So he's not in last anymore. He's not in last, though. And we have Stolsky in last with 25. Oh, oh. Ooh, it's going to be a tight one. I think, yeah, I mean, I, I, 
I will try to get a hold of Stolsky, see if he can get uh, enough Wi-Fi action in the old uh, salmon camp to get this thing done in the next two days. Yeah, yeah. He should be able to set both of them too. So he can he can set this and St. Lawrence in once, and we'll see how it rides out. Yeah. But for Champlain, I have uh, bucket A, I have Brian Schmidt, because he is a hammer there. He's won a handful of times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, feel good about that one. Group B, Seth Fighter. I believe Fighters fished three events there and never finished below second or third. And he hasn't won yet. Um, so he's pretty due there. Group C, Felix. Group D, Pipkins. And Group E, I agree with uh, Honor. I got Josh Douglas. Solid Very picks. Nice. Solid, Solid picks. picks. What do you guys got for weight? Um, I, I feel like I, I feel I like can, I was light. I did 80, 82 10. That that's actually that's, that's pretty good. I said, I went, oh, go ahead. I went lighter than that. I went eighty pounds seven ounces. I went about a little over twenty a day. Yeah. yeah. Um, I said mine eighty three eight. I'm thinking high twenty pounds. Have like a 22 pound day in there a 19 pound day and then high 20 and then like a 21 and a half or something. Honor, do you think can largies compete there anymore? With oh yeah. How much the small mouth have taken off? They still can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If, if someone wanted to exploit it, I mean, the, the big thing is, is it's so easy. Um, it, it's just a safer play to stick closer and fish the small mouth. And there's more, and there's large mouth up there rather than taking the risk of going all the way down to tie and which you might not be able to fish all four days down there because it gets horrible on that run down there. And it's 75 miles there, 75 miles back. And I mean, I, I fished a tournament where I had 30 minutes to fish down there. And I still felt like you had a chance just because there's so many fish. Um, wow. But it's just an e- it's just a better play to probably stay up north. But if someone did the tie run and was able to fish four days, they could definitely compete. Somebody sure. will, dude. Yeah. His name is John Cox. Yeah. <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> I but, mean, uh, what's his name? Um, there's an FLW tournament where – Oh, didn't shit. Tyler Stewart run down Tyler there Stewart. for a while? Yep. Yeah, yep. 24 one day, didn't he? Yep. yep, which I've I mean, you should see it at night. If you like grass fishing, it's it's heaven. If like once the sun starts going down, just pick up like anything, like a walking bait, and they all come out of the mats. I mean, you can catch it's like 20 plus every single night. It, it's wow. insane. Hmm. That That's doesn't crazy. suck. No, it's pretty awesome. That is fun. But yeah, so fantasy season will be wrapping up by the next podcast we have. We will have a winner, loser, where everybody will be sitting and who will be doing the turkey trot hungover. So it will be a beautiful thing. It really will. Really hope it's not me. Um, (laughs) But now we are done with that. Now we are going to roll into we introduced you to her earlier. We got Maggie Carcello here. She's been hanging out for a little bit during these other segments, but now we're going to dive into getting to know a little bit more. Yeah. Like I said, I'm struggling. I want to leave this off a little bit more about Maggie. And so please do this off. Please do. Okay. I want to leave this off. So you've been extremely active on social media from like probably 2018 to now, correct? Sure. Potentially. And we've seen your adventures, what you do, your life, everything like that. And we'll get into more about that later. But right now, I want you to start off by telling me, bring me from birth to 2018. What, what is, what's the life of Maggie? What's, what's your root? <clears throat> Where are you from? Who got you into the outdoors? Who, yeah, and it doesn't even have to be about outdoors. Just bring me from birth to 2018. In 27 yeah. words. First of all, I can't count that high. Um, second, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't. I grew up, born and raised in uh, central Wisconsin. Big old bitch of a baby, nine pounds seven ounces. Uh, Wausau <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> um, geez, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, 
What's your hometown? Where, 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 are, you, where are you born? Wasa. Wasa. As I just said. <laughs> Pay attention. Stick no. From the dirty saw. Right. Dirty saw. I can't talk, but I can listen. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, born and raised central Wisconsin, like the Wasa area. I was more so in like the smaller towns outside of Wasa. Like I lived in, if anybody's familiar with the area, Hatley is where I grew up. And then like Weston, Schofield, Rothschild, like that area. Um. My dad has always been really into the outdoors, hunting, fishing. But, I mean, growing up, my hunting was just, like, one-week rifle season with him every year, pretty much. That's really all I did, but I loved it. Um, I first started going just for the snacks, like, from really, really little. Um, then I got got into it. Got my first deer. It was a spike. It was cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, fishing, you know, just bobber, panfish stuff, like bluegills. Uh but you're throwing a bobber with a worm, you'll catch a largemouth here and there. And I was jacked. Like, I don't, I was like obsessed with catching largemouth by accident when I was little, but I got really into it in college, I guess you could say. Um, I went to UW Stevens Point with, geez, now it's four of us, huh? Yeah. Just you, Bart. It's four. Yeah, just four me. of us. Why did you decide um, to go there? Because um, perspective wise to your house, like that was just like a good play. Not really. Because actually, by that point, my parents moved from Wausau, so they weren't there anymore anyway. Uh, they live up on the border of the UP now. So um, it was more so my older sister went there, and I was, you know, I went there to see her a couple times, and I was familiar with it. I liked that it wasn't a huge school. Um, it's close to my grandma. She's like my best friend, so I got to go see her here and there. That's cool. Um, but yeah, obviously, as you guys know, it's a big school for like – forestry you know i don't know stuff like that outdoorsy stuff so i made a lot of good buddies who really got me into bass fishing which was awesome um would go fishing at my favorite spot sam you know where it is don't say it i showed you um like between classes like i just got really really into it but like i really didn't know what the hell i was doing like i was throwing a weightless pit boss fishing at top water like, <laughs> <laughs> like i had no idea what i, I probably doing, slapped I in retro now it was, that you mention it yeah seriously it was good trying <laughs> um but yeah i just i freaking fell in love with bass fishing in college so um grew up fishing but definitely didn't necessarily grow up bass fishing or turn like i didn't do any of the high school college stuff necessarily um but I just fell in love with it and I never anticipated like doing any of the social media stuff with it, but I was just posting on my personal Instagram, like fish I'd catch or, you know, the deer I got with my dad and people just kind of took a liking to it for whatever reason. And I feel like social media used to be different too. Like, I think it was easier to grow back then. I don't, maybe I'm crazy by saying that, but like with TikTok and stuff, I think it's easier now, but just back then it was like, a random whatever page would repost one of my bass pictures and then I would get X amount of followers and it was just fun. Like I've never really cared that much about the social aspect to be honest, but like the people that it allowed me to meet and the opportunities, like it's really yeah. cool. Like it's cool. It's a lot of yeah. pros, a lot of cons, but that's awesome. Yeah. So with, with the social media stuff, like transitioning, I mean, you've done that and I'm sure we'll talk about that a lot, but you're also a hammer around in that middle Wisconsin area. I always see tournament winnings and doing very well. Like what circuits are you fishing there? And like, how'd you get into that whole scene? And I mean, doing very well, like it's not just a social media thing for you. I think we talked about this a bit with Jesse and sometimes the whole influencer thing gets a bad vibe. And there's some yeah. people who do it right and are really good. And there's others uh, that we don't necessarily need to talk about. But, yeah, how do you get into that and, like, doing very well? And, and yeah. maybe talk about your first tournament ever. Because, like you said, you really got into bass fishing more around, like, 2017, 18. And, and mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people feel intimidated just by the bass world or actually jumping in their first tournament. Yeah, it is intimidating. And that's why I get a lot of messages like that on social media. Like, how do I get into them? How do I find them? And I mean, the first one I fished, it was tiny. Like, I think it was in around Stevens Point or Wapaka or something like that. Um, I like there's so many Facebook groups and just like little like local clubs or even like I feel like bar leagues or like bass clubs have little leagues like on the weeknights or whatever, which I know a lot of us participate in. Or, and it's super and my experience is like inclusive and welcoming and a really good way to kind of get your feet wet with, with that kind of stuff. So 
but my first one ever. So I don't remember if I said this while we were recording or before when we were bullshitting a little bit, but Sam talked me into joining the U- UWSP bass team right before he ditched me. But um, so basically I like joined, <laughs> paid my like $20 dues, whatever. <laughs> like it was stupid yeah. <laughs> cheap. And um, I went to like one meeting and that's all I did. So I, but Hey, I bought like a sweatshirt with my name on it. So that was cool. Um, but, uh, I think because you left, I, I mean, it was, it was intimidating. You were really the only one I knew. I remember at that meeting, like we went around and it was, everybody share your, uh, like your name and your favorite technique. And I was like, I'm Maggie and I like throwing a horny toad. <laughs> I still remember that. To this day. <laughs> Those meetings Incredible. were weak though. I, I will still say. remember that every other guy in there was like flipping and I was like horny toad. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Um, I didn't do anything with the club really, but I was like, I want to do this stuff. And then a different buddy that I had met in Stevens Point asked me to be a sub for like a bar league, uh, like musky tournament. And that, as most of you know, at least that's not my thing. Like the only time I've ever caught a musky is by accident. Bass fishing. I have not caught one when I'm trying to musky fish yet. Um, but I did that. And then while we were at the bar after that, I met like a older gentleman who's super nice. He's still one of my good buddies. And he like, we wound up just staying in touch and he asked me to be his partner for a bass tournament. And I was like, hell right, brother. Like, I don't know. Yeah. What I had like one ugly stick that I got from the Stevens point fleet farm. Like, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, but um, I loved it. I think we brought in like two fish, two smallies, but I was like, this is sweet. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah. He, he, was the intensity, like, yeah. He, he was like, we don't need to take a picture. Like we don't need to weigh in. We didn't even get a limit. I was like, hell no, I'm documenting though. You know, my first tournament ever. I th- it was awesome. And ever since then, like the more tournaments you do, the more people that you talk to there. And like the more, like I've jumped in as a coal first from so many tournaments. Um, I mean, I don't want to say so many, but like, you know, you make some buddies and then they're like, Hey, do you want to be my partner for, I got into fishing angler's choice with a buddy. And that was really fun. Like that was my first experience fishing a whole series where like points matter, weights yeah. matter, you know, and you're like working towards a championship. So that was really cool. Um, meeting more and more people. I really enjoy being in the, I'm in the Madison bass club as well. So uh, I just do that as a co, but you're getting in the boat with, you know, someone different for every tournament. So you're learning so many things. You, you're there, you're learning what not to do, you know, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. hearing stories, a lot of the guys are older and just such a good time, fun to fish with. And um, obviously I do Andrew. He's, he's a, my usual go-to partner now, but it's still fun. Like when I'm a co for, uh, we do, our club is a member of the TBF. So for like three or four years in a row now, I've qualified for the TBF national semifinals. So you're getting paired as a co with a random voter from either like Minnesota, Illinois, Wisconsin. Usually they try not to do two people from the same state. So yeah, it's even more people that you're getting in a boat with and fishing with sometimes out of state. Like we'll come over to Minnesota for that often. So yeah, I don't know what other, I do uh, the Wabta tournaments around here. I don't do a lot of other big stuff, just kind of our club stuff, the English choice series, uh, Wabta, and then just any other ones, local ones that we can hop in. Um, like big bass bashes or stuff like that. So that's sick. I feel like your your learning curve so much faster than so many other people just because you put yourself out there and then you put yourself in situations getting the boat with a bunch of different people. Like that's that's everything I feel like because everybody probably you you pull a little bit from them, pull a little bit from them. Like definitely time on the water and, and hard knocks is like how you get better. But being able to hop in the boat with so many different people and For you sure. did that like yeah. I, I bet your learning curve is so much faster. Yeah. It helps a lot. And like, I will say still like those tournaments where I'm a co and I get paired with someone, I don't know what, maybe this is just a me thing, but I do, I get really nervous and I'm like, Oh, well, you know, what if it's a terrible time? Like, what if I set the hook and miss and like hit the side of his boat with a half ounce weight, you know, like stuff like that. Like I get really yeah. nervous beforehand. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm so glad I did this. Like we had the best time, like, Larry sent me a friend request already. Like we're going to be BFFs now, you know, stuff Larry. like that. Like I just made something up. I didn't <laughs> yeah, want to I know, expose yeah. anyone here, but like, I don't know. I, I do like, it can be intimidating for sure. And I, I'm sure I'm getting a little more used to it at this point, but it's fun. It's cool. Getting in the so, boat with different people is really fun. 
with that, Maggie, I'm sure we'll end up having a handful of maybe, I mean, young guys or girls who want to get into fishing some tournaments like that. Like, what's your advice in terms of, like, battling that anxiety or intimidation or whatever to just, like, get in there and do it? Because you've battled that and, like, you know, had to go through it. Yeah, I guess I would say my biggest advice is, like, there have been, first of all, I'm not a morning person, so that probably doesn't help. But there have been mornings where I'm just, like, I don't want to say dreading it, but, like, I just get nervous. And maybe it's because I'm a girl. Like, I'm thinking about, like, what happens when I have to pee or, like, what (laughs) you know, stuff like that. But um, I would say to just remember that every other time that you're nervous about it, like, at the end of the day, you're like, I'm so happy I went and I did it because we had a great time and I learned so much. And, like, just not letting it hold you back, I guess. And even if it's not your favorite experience ever, like, you definitely took something away from it and – I mean, there's always going to be things that you're like, oh, I wish that wouldn't have happened. Or he talked a lot about the brewers and I didn't care or something like that, you know, but (laughs) like, you're not going to regret going like nine times out of 10. Like, even if you don't bring a legal fish in, like, you're just going to be like, oh, that story he told me about 1984 when, you know, I don't know. You're going to be happy you did it. So I guess just not letting it discourage you or just making yourself go do it. Cause I can just about promise you won't regret it. Cause I haven't had a bad experience with it yet. Like it's, it's good. And like I said, like, even if it's learning what not to do, that's going to happen sometimes too. (laughs) So, I mean, obviously there's like a lot of bass stuff and I know you're like, your Instagram is definitely like pretty heavily focused on that, which I think is pretty badass. But like the past few years, you've definitely been doing more and more like on the ice side of things and getting more into like ice fishing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, we'll get into that, but I did want to bring up, so we did do like a group trip and I did want (laughs) to, This was like, so Sam, you oh were there boy. and we had, yeah, I don't know. We had a pretty good squad. This was like two winters ago, I think two or three yeah. winters ago that we it did. Uh, squad, yeah. Yeah. We had, we did a big trip up to like Northern Wisconsin and, uh, and you and Andrew came and we, had, it was actually kind of a badass trip. Like we did some cool shit. And I don't think like after that, we never really like talked about that at all. But, like, that was a really badass trip. And, Sam, I don't know if you remember, like, we went out on some crazy, like, flowages and stuff. I know you That was so it. sweet. Just getting getting there was – no, it was. It was cool. Just because, like, <laughs> it, was, it was. It was really it cool. Was. I remember how pissed like, Maggie sick. was, though, at Andrew the whole time. I, can, I, can, I can still remember. Like, he was like, I'll take you guys here. Like, I've been here. This is going to be sick. Like, there's a, there's a trail, whatever. It was sick. Get, it was sick. It was it, sick, it was but cool. we were, like, lost as – it was cool, but like I can still remember. <laughs> like I was like, Andrew, there's a, like I got a lot riding on this. Like they invited us to this. Like we gotta like put them on these fish that we know are here. Like whatever. And we're riding out there, and <laughs> all of a sudden he looks back at me. He's like, I have turned too early, or like something. He was like, I missed the turn, and we're going through a marsh. Like it's like all of these like, yeah. like you know what I mean? Like it's ice, oh, yeah. but it's like those like mounds of like, oh, yeah. reeds and like. <laughs> And that's what I, that's at the time, like too, like following you guys and stuff as you're like breaking trail through these marshes as we're like island hopping on this reservoir. I'm like, whoa, they're so hard. (laughs) That's what I thought you were like, holy shit, dude. I'm like, oh my God, dude, they're bringing this to the shit. I don't think it would have been that big of a deal, but none of us had our sleds like secured at all. So there's like mega lives flying through the air (laughs) like like buckets of live bait (laughs) and we had a lot of people too like are we like we're packing gear into all camera gear like yeah yeah, oh i was i felt bad like obviously it turned out okay but i was like oh Oh, like we had one job (laughs) he takes a wrong turn and you guys are like oh fuck oh no and so he's like this is the sickest thing it Never. was, dude. Yes, it was. It was no like a idea how ten mile there. run, minimum oh, ten miles. It was bad. <laughs> and here's the thing: now that I'm hearing you say that, okay, whatever. But we were all in separate units, so like, I don't know what they're saying back there. Like, I'm like, they're probably so pissed right now. Like, <laughs> no, it was, like, Sam's it was having fun. a time of his life. The oh, adventure, yes. just getting there. I was like, dude, I, this was, this is incredible. We don't <laughs> if, if, if got... <laughs> but we could tell how pissed you were at him, like the whole time. <laughs> yeah, we were just we could it feel up. it <laughs> I mean, like, like even uh, even back at the cabin it was like ooh, we should not talk to them about any of this <laughs> it was bad. like i don't know if i like 
I know Cody, that's the only one will understand this, but if I've got any Ace Ventura people out here, like, you know, when he's like in the Jeep, like on the paved road, but he's like, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, like that was our ride. <laughs> like, it was well, so and we were all on bad. wheelers. So it was like even uh, worse. Like then we were on snowmobiles or something that was, dude, I can't like that trip to me is just like a blur, but like, it was such a good time. Like we, yeah. we, we filmed a bunch on that too. There's some good videos of it out there. You know what I remember from that trip? What? Tell me. First of all, like I was cracking my ass through the ice. Just saying. If I don't know if you guys remember that part, but I remember we got no. to that one spot, and I <laughs> say hey, no. You do not recall. <laughs> uh, I remember that one spot where we. I don't know if it was like our first spot or whatever, but we get there and like you guys are doing all right, and I just got lucky. Like what the hole I picked, like I was like, ding. Thing. Oh, was this was this maybe, yes. is this a day after or last day there? May, I don't know. Maybe. I yeah, yeah this, this was the last day. day. This was the last day. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just I'm literally just like bing bing bing. And knowing me, I don't know what I got up to go grab, like a slim gym or something. <laughs> I don't know. Like I walked away for a little bit and I come back around. Oh, freaking Ryan is just <laughs> oh, he left. <laughs> and I filmed the whole thing <laughs> of, that, of, <laughs> yeah, of yeah. poaching that hole. It was so good. Was There's like, a video. I ain't too proud. Yeah, and I just started wheeling him right there. I wasn't mad, but we did. I mean, we 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 beat him up pretty hard the last day. Someone's no call it a harvest. Yeah, a heavy uh, harvest. Yeah. We, you know, yeah. yeah, we were harvesting heavy. Is yeah. that where the infamous Twisted Tea commercial was filmed? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So good off the cuff, dude. Adam, dude, that was crushed it. Ryan crushed it. Maggie and Andrew were right there. Yeah. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think I was in there. <laughs> no, you, you were, were right there. Moral, though. Were I, but I watched. Yeah. 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 You watched. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. saw that. Yeah. <laughs> it was is so well done. It should be. We'll we'll dub it over right here. We need to Maybe revitalize that. Yeah. Yeah. Plot Play the clip right here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh god. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh god. On. Hook it's up. her, dude. It's freaking her. Get it, dude. Get it, dude. Here she comes. Get her. Here she Get comes. Her. Oh Get her. my god. Yes. 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 This is beautiful. Look at the colors on her. You think we should let her go? Absolutely not. Wow, there's that, so much that happened just like one damn weekend. That was good. That was good. No, anyway, but yes, that was I, the oh. only. What? I'm really gonna expose myself here. Yeah. All right. How do we do podcast as well? Rip. How do we do with like poop stories on this podcast? Are we okay oh, with them? Even or? better. Fire oh. Okay. <laughs> you remember Cole was there too. You remember that? Yes. All right. Well, this pants? is yes. No, <laughs> has... it was it was. Was Cole there? Augie was there. Brock was Augie there. was there. Augie oh, no, and Brock he, were no, there. It, yeah, my bad. It was Augie. My bad. My yeah, bad. Augie, it was Augie. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Pat. Um, uh, so <laughs> the first night we got there, we hit the bush lights hard. Yeah. Yep. You remember that? Like, well, I mean, we were drinking a, a decent amount that night. And the next yeah. day, I am an infamous hangover poops person. Like, I mean, I was not doing well. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I went to the bathroom and... Augie was like waiting outside to go in there, and I was like, mm. no, "Like no. I, I said, I, was like, no. I wouldn't. You don't want to go in there." I like wouldn't. I said it, and then he like still went anyway, and he like from that was like, "Oh my god!" Like from mm. the bathroom, I was like, "I'm sorry." And, I'm and so Augie, sorry. and Augie's the type of guy you look at, and Augie like doesn't know how to talk to like a girl in general. <laughs> so he, he's like, "You don't want to go in there," and he's like, "What's she talking about? Girls don't poop." I was so <laughs> like, like usually I like own there, that. It's smell stuff, like lavender. But, like I'll own that stuff, but like I, you know, you don't even really want someone to like go smell it. So and he went in there, and then he came out, and in front of everyone, he was like, "You blew that shit up." And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> you, we did. Oh, that was like dude. a hella drinking weekend, though. Like, cause you guys got there super late at night, yeah. and just went like zero to a hundred, and I was like. Yeah. I was like, oh, you guys were doing this for a while already. Oh, I'll catch up. <laughs> Not scared. No, that That's was like so the one thing I remember from that trip that scarred me forever. 
that's why I think I don't have as many stories from that as like I don't we were <laughs> remember it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm trying to think back. Like, too. Ryan, you chefed up a bunch of fish, and there was dude. A I know, like oh. we crushed it, and we filmed so. Like I, I know I like watched the videos back like not that long ago, and I was like, oh, that was such a sick trip. But I was like, huh, don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Bush light and vodka Red Bulls and yeah, a lot of fried God. fish. Seven <laughs> sevens, dude. My favorite thing too, uh, because I was mad at him that trip. Once you guys uh, <laughs> dropped the video, like you were like Maggie, like you pop, like you had like a little intro on the thing, like Maggie, yep. blah blah. And then you went Andrew, Maggie's camera guy, and I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that was on time. That was funny night. as hell. Yeah, yeah. I, we didn't know like what was going on, but like there was definitely some friction. What, was there more? Was there more to the story than just just hangover? There had to have been because it started before you got hangover there. number twos, or was there more on the dock? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, like I guess why well, well, I was mad, or what? yeah, were you just mad at him because of the long trek? Or I mean, he probably doesn't want me talking about this on here, but I just get mad because I'm like you guys are my friends and I brought you and then we get there and he's like, I do this. And I'm like, no, we did that. And then like, he's like, Maggie who? And I'm like, I'm right here. Like I brought you here. That's why I get mad. You weren't even going to bring them initially. Yeah. That's why I get mad. I'm like, Hey, these are my boys, not yours. Just so you know, that's why I was, I wasn't that mad. I wasn't going to bring that up earlier, but I wasn't that mad about the trek once we made it out. <laughs> yeah, Such a that was a good week. Like I literally, like whenever that happens, like I felt like I sat there the whole weekend. Like, no, you didn't. We were freaking having a good one. <laughs> That's just the blackout talking. Oh, we do crack. you remember when we had that little walleye flurry on the tip ups? That happened. Oh, yes, yeah, but yes, the tip ups yes. were like four miles away. Yeah, but that's what yes. was so sick about it. Like you'd see a tip up go up, and you just rip the four wheeler over, and the like I came they... back with that. Big ass one. Every yeah. time you guys would leave, the conversation was the same. That. Me, Demarkey, and Sobe are just standing there going, "How the fuck did they even see that go off?" <laughs> yeah, I do. Th- I do remember. Like, I don't know if it's you or Andrew. Somebody has incredible eyes. Incredible <laughs> eyes. <laughs> they they you're hopping Andrew. around a four wheeler, going a mile away to get a tip up. That I'm literally telling. These like, are no less than a mile out with a little blinking red light on. All right. First off, any dark. game wardens are listening to this, that's an exaggeration. <laughs> it was a mile and a half. No, <laughs> it, was, it, it wasn't. And it wasn't a bald eagle. Hunter was talking about it. It was, it was a loon. loon. It was a loon. <laughs> an <laughs> undisclosed location. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, that was that fun. Was, that was a hell of a trip. But no, anyway, I did. I did. I'm going to bring this up. This is completely unrelated, but I do want your thoughts on this because I can't think of anyone more qualified for this. Oh my. And I do, I want some actual, you know, uh, your opinion here. I'm not qualified for much, so let's hear this. What are your thoughts on the Morgan Wallen haircut? Ooh. And give you it to me, me to straight get on. Emotion- Give it to me straight. On, I, be honest. Yes. Be honest. All right. I, I actually gave this rant at work today because my boss is a beautiful bald man. So, and I hurt his feelings. So let me just get this out there. Bald is beautiful. I don't have any issues with bald. That's not the problem. But when you have the most beautiful mullet in America, you don't shave it off. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I got no issues with bald, and I still love him. I still love his music. Am I sad? Am I heartbroken? Am I less attracted to him now? Yes. Would you say disappointed? Yeah, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad. <laughs> yeah, I'm <disappointed. laughs> Did he ever say why he did it or like, is it came out like what? Well, like, I saw what? videos from his concert and he was like, Oh, just going to get this out there right now. Like I was sick of my long hair. So I shaved it off and I was like, what? I didn't have to shave it. <laughs> that, so- that sounds like a very guy statement in general. Yeah. I, maybe I believe him, but like either I think he had like a Britney Spears moment or That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> or like his hairdresser was like, Oh, let's like touch up these, this, the sides quick. And like, didn't put the guard on or something. They were like, oh, no. Shave it. Like, and then they, yeah. I don't know. I, it just seemed drastic to me. I was hoping he was going to go back to the voice haircut that he had for when he was on The Voice. <laughs> the long. Was, the, yeah. Where the he, Lord Farquaad. Yes. 
where he wasn't the country boy. He was like the white collar kid that his mom took to the to the audition. Oh my god! <laughs> Sing church music. I will yeah. say, I will give it. I don't know who it was, but one of my followers on Instagram was like, uh, like challenging me on the Morgan Wallen thing. Like, I don't get why you're so obsessed with this guy. And I was like, it's a. I just am. It's okay. And he sent me a picture of the voice Morgan Wallen. And he goes. Uh, I'm sorry, but this guy wasn't born with a beer in his hand because he's a song like I was born with a beer in my hand. And I was like, <laughs> I'll give you that one. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> well, no, Lord Farquaad looking ass. <laughs> Incredible. So you're so mad at him too. Fair enough. All right. So kind of to parlay that with, with some celebrity action, I did have a question for you. Right. Um, if you could go to dinner with anyone in the outdoor world, who would you go to dinner with? They could be alive or dead. And if you could just go to dinner with anyone in the rest of the world, alive or dead, who would you go with? Hmm. And you could say Morgan Wallen if you wanted. Or you could say Morgan yeah. Wallen from 2022. Uh, from a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, my, like, outside of the outdoor industry one would probably be Morgan Wallen still. Um, this week or, or a week ago? Pre or post cut. Yeah. I still love him. Either way, it'll grow back. I what hope. if it doesn't, though? Gone no, forever. <laughs> this is a touchy subject. You know what, though? In like a, in just a respectful way, you know who's like getting up there with Morgan Wallen for me? Freaking Hardy. Maybe I would get dinner with Hardy, but like if also his wife could come because she's cool as shit, too. I love both of them. But, uh. So the, Hardy's uh, wife? Was that. <laughs> She's cool. <laughs> Call me. Wow. That's a popular <laughs> um, pick. Yeah. No, no, no. But Hardy's cool. Like, Hardy's Morgan Wallen level cool. He doesn't get enough credit. He's cool. But uh, inside the outdoor industry, can I do another, like, toss-up tie? Because this one's hard for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either Bill Dance or uh, G-Man and Lulu. Can they both Ooh. come together? Yeah. I love G Man. He's cool. If you really had the opportunity between Bill Dance and G Man and Lulu, would you really pick Bill Dance? Or would no. You no, would you would G Man. You would go with G Man and Lulu. Come on. I know you would. Think about the conversation with Bill yeah. Dance. I feel like the conversation wouldn't be great. Yeah, it would be or a lot as, of or as good. Yeah, You'd be talking about right. the, the faked bloopers the entire time and how the hat came to be and then it I just did end. finally. I've <laughs> seen him at so many like classics and eye casts and whatever, and yeah. I've always been so scared to like say hi to him. And I Bill finally, Dance I was or like, Man? Uh, Bill Dance. And I was finally like, this is the year. This is the year. So at the classic, I finally went up to him. And he, I don't know if you guys saw, I posted a reel. Like I took a picture with him and he put my hat up. He was like, put your hat up so they can see your pretty face. And I was like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. <laughs> They're good oh, pets. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah. G-Man. Oh. Those are did solid talk, picks. Did you talk to him at ICAST? G-Man? Yeah, when he's in the raffle booth? Honestly, no. Like, I get so, like, scared. I just, he's just so cool. Um, I, you just, I said like, hi stared to at him or what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said hi I'm to with you. I didn't say, I didn't say um, anything to him either. I was spooked, too. The first classic I went to, I, like, did the whole I waited in a line and I went and I took a photo with both of them, G Man and Lulu. So I've talked to them a little bit, but like fangirl level. Not like, hey, we're both in the Rapala booth, which would have been the more, you know, acceptable answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of that Rapala thing and being in that booth, how cool has it been being involved with that whole Crush City thing? I know you and Sam have been doing a little bit. Sam Moore filming some stuff going on, mm-hmm. some cool stuff going on there. Yeah. How cool has that whole deal been? Coming like, from being in college, throwing a pit boss, wacky style yeah. scene. I'm going to throw a horny toad to Crush City. <laughs> right. I mean, this is cliche, but like, just what a freaking honor that is. When you look at the stacked roster of people that they got for Crush City, and just like that was one of my first. Um, experiences being part of something or at least being in the know you know it's not like I helped design them or anything like Wheeler but like being in the know and like being part of it and using them before the rest of the world even knew about them like that was a first for me and it was really cool like I caught one of my biggest smallies this uh spring on the the BLT Ned and you know I couldn't tell anyone what I caught it on but 
uh, it was just, it was really sweet. And I've just been cleaning fish up all summer with all that Crush City stuff. And it was cool. That ICAST experience was cool. I've been to one or two other ICASTs and like, I've just never been so involved in like, you know, the little media events and awards and just seeing how passionate that, you know, all the Rapala guys in the Crush City team is behind, you know, that's their baby and like Wheeler being in the booth, talking about it and overhearing him talking to, you know, people that come in and just all the work and thought and the process that goes, goes into it. It was new experience for me, but I was like honored is the best word I can think of it. It's like all these pros, you know, so we, all these people. And then it's like, and then there's me. I'm like, I don't know how the heck I got here, but the the cool thing is it, it almost seems like they're making a team that, you know, everyone can relate to, like whether you're one of those elite guys or an MLF guy or a YouTuber or just me, you know, there's kind of something for everyone. And it's, it's really Big cool. Time. I yeah. thought it was cool to, to meet people from different sides of Apple, like, like overseas, like you really hit it off with yeah. Emma. Like yeah. so cool. And just cool. like how, what, like what Rapala culture is like overseas and like mm-hmm. their number one baits, their sellers, like what, what they're really there for and what they're looking for. Like, I thought that was, I, I thought that was crazy. And just even like, you know, you're from Wisconsin, I'm from Minnesota. We're all just from damn small towns in the Midwest. Like you forget like, Oh shoot. Like Rapala is international or just right. fishing in general is international. Like there's all these different, you know, sub subspecies of a company that it's like dang that's that's crazy okay wow okay yeah. wow you're going for xander okay this is what's a top seller right. for xander it's a top seller for giant perch and pike over there over in europe and you're like holy smokes wow mm-hmm. yeah, yeah was it was crazy. an experience like nothing else i've ever experienced before that i cast was one for the books for sure that was awesome no <clears throat> that's that's super sick super sick to hear and I guess with that, so being your involvement with the social media and everything, I told Pink I was going to ask this, and you can totally reject this, but I think this would be a good thing. So, uh, God, how do I put this? I'll just go for it. So, uh, being, so Maggie, being this a is gonna go woman, well, no doubt, being a woman and being an attractive woman in the fishing industry, you think what are, I'm what are, what are what are those DMs like? Like, what do you got going on in there? Come on. We've warmed up the conversation. If you've made it this long, an hour and 35 minutes in, listeners, now we're in. Time. In, sit down. <laughs> earned this. Yeah. You, you had will, the potatoes, you had the vegetables. Now it's time for the steak. I will say, and I like, I by no means am like trying to toot my own horn when I say this, but like, I, I'd like to think I at least try to keep my social media pretty like clean and respectful and whatnot. So I think if I didn't, I think that my DMs would be a lot worse. Like I know a lot of friends or other gals in the industry that get much worse than I do, or maybe I'm just ugly, you know, I don't know. I think they could be a lot worse than they are. Um, And I have gotten interesting ones, um, but mine aren't that bad. Like aside the top three that you can just kind of recall and you don't have to say names or anything like that, but just like, what are some extremely odd ones that you're like, Oh my gosh. Like almost like you screenshotted that you're like, I'm, I need to remember this. You had to have gotten ass for feet picks. Had yeah. To. How much for foot picks, which like, <laughs> which, I don't really understand. Did you like, ever respond my, with a number? You like you gotta have case? a dollar number. Like no, there, I just don't get it because I'm wearing like my Sims flip flops on the boat. Like my feet are out all the time. But Maybe you don't have to get it. Full you know? want some side hustle money. He wants some just for him. I guess, you know, I don't like know. Like 500. I don't did know you throw? Was, did you not respond, you, or did you throw out a price? I I don't respond. Those kind of scare me. Um, <laughs> foot picks. Uh, wow. Just for the record, I do have heard of some random women being like, "You know what? Fuck it," and just thousand dollars. Just I don't have hearing about I, these random women. So <laughs> you, you might as well. You might as well. <laughs> You are paying to see their feet, Bart. <laughs> you think Here's I got thing. that? Kind of... How many credit cards do you have? <laughs> Here's the thing, Bart. I do not have the dogs for that. Like, no one wants to see these. They're they wild. obviously do. They ask. <laughs> They're not good. Yes, because they haven't seen them yet. They'd, like, send me a Venmo request back and be like, <laughs> I didn't pay for this. It's incredible. Oh, uh, I don't know. I... 
I honestly, I had a feeling you guys were going to ask me this, and I keep most of the scary ones in my requests. And I think Instagram just did some, like, uh, update. Like, they all got cleared out. Like, I have, like, four yeah. in there right now, and I usually Same have, here. like, 300. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think these are, like, bots, but, like, weird sugar baby stuff, like, sugar daddy stuff. Um, like, saying, like, yeah, you should wear, like, a bikini or whatever. Fish or uh there's i'll get some too that are just like there's assholes be. like yeah. um like basically saying like oh there's no way you know how to fish there's no way you're catching those someone else caught it like and you're holding it and i'm like okay um i will i probably shouldn't get into this one. Oh, oh, come on get into it there's i'd one say one of always mind. delete it <laughs> one of the most shocking messages i got was actually from a chick <laughs> oh here we go <laughs> no but this is bad like i don't want to we're listening uh, there's no names involved you're good yeah if i can be really discreet about this yeah you're and good. i'm not gonna say what like circuit or series or any like yeah I'm yeah not... you're good so, but basically down. someone that bass fishes for a living i'm a fan of them and i've like had the really cool opportunity to meet them at shows before i actually had them autograph a hat for me and I don't want to give this away, but like the hat for the tournament I was fishing, like it made sense to wear. So I posted it on my story and I was like, Oh, I hope this brings me luck or whatever. They reposted it. And I get a message from, I'm assuming the partner um, saying like, I was trying to keep my language somewhat clean, but I'm just going to say what the message said. Like, I got a message saying, like, the fuck you need my man's good luck for? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, right after that, like, the fisherman deleted the story and, like, whatever. And I never replied, but it was really scary. <laughs> that was, like, the most scared I've ever been from a message before. <laughs> dang. dang. Oh, God damn. Yeah, that one was scary. <laughs> I don't get that. I think, like, I used to get more, like, sexual ones. I don't get those a lot anymore. I don't know. So I'm having trouble thinking of one. I got one the other day. I don't know. Did you guys happen to see my driveway beers story the other day with that kid singing, going by on his bike? Yeah. If not, nope. it's okay. I had someone reply and they said my street name. They were like, is that blah, blah, blah street? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> that's pretty cool. And they were like, I yeah. swear that's the house I grew up in. And I like, if, if he really just grew up in that house, I'm like, all right, that's fair. Like I get There's it. There's no but way I, you responded to that. No, I don't really want anyone to know where I live. <laughs> yeah, you know? No. That one was weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one too. That's avoid. messed up, actually. God damn. Yeah, that was weird. But, I don't know. I'm uh, sorry. I don't have anything juicier for you. It, it, it's no, a lot dude. of the foot picks and the. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> see that. If you, I mean, okay. If, just if you so had, much if you like had that. to name a price, though. <laughs> Yeah, if, if, <laughs> there if has, has to be a price. We, we, we'll all go around and, and name our price. Like what? Five you, bucks? No, no, no. If no. you had no, to. No, because you would have done it then. Yeah. <laughs> Honor, what would you do for foot picks? hundred bucks. foot pick? I don't know. It's yeah. just my foot. Like If someone asked you, Honor, I'll send you money for your feet. <laughs> Can we do a higher or lower? Sure. sure. Okay. hundred. Lower. 20 bucks. <laughs> on a still, Friday. Honestly, probably still lower. <laughs> 15 I would say bucks. like ten I, I right mean, five dollars isn't bucks. worth it, but like ten dollars I could actually get something from Quick Trip. I could yeah. I could probably so pick 10? something up. I'd say ten. Ten, 10 that's yeah. like a decent that's like a little meal. I'm yeah. feeding myself with my feet. Yeah. I agree. No, there I think you go. that's solid. Ryan. Ten bucks is just a foot. Yeah, I so I think I'd be higher just because I think I'm just trying to get a premium here for just like okay if I'm only gonna sell a few of these you must make have worth the good my stuff. time. Yeah, they're not bad, dude. Uh, I'd be like hundred bucks. Let's, let's come on, take the dogs out. Let's see him. Oh, they're he's gonna, he's gonna no, he's gonna need, he needs a hundred dollars first. I yeah, yeah hundred bucks. You let me know. <laughs> hey. We'll talk. We'll talk. Yeah, I I'm kind of on the board with Pink. I would be like. Hundred, uh, then you get rate you you know gauge it. You're like, oh, I might be able to get. Well, like if it's going well, we're, it goes up. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, 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 for sure. You go from penny stock to blue chip real quick. Yeah, exactly. Soby, yeah, Soby, right. how how about you? Um, 
And for anyone listening, Sobe has some random tattoos on his feet. So if you're interested, but he I also do. has the tan line angle. So it's that's like, what I'm, I was just about to that's go a in. Niche. Yeah. That's a in niche. The, in the summer. I would sell my feet picks for $110. Now that I know the market, Cody's at the absolute mm-hmm. freaking bottom being yep. 10. And, yeah. and I'm and I'm now at the top 110 in the summer with the tan line. That, that's what I would do. In the winter, I, I'd sell it for $10. Nice. <laughs> but, yeah. nice. but in yeah. in the summer, 110. I don't know that here. winter feet picks are like as popular anyway. Here's my <laughs> issue. I don't the know if there are, I don't know if there <laughs> are a lot of other women out there with the flip-flop tan line that I have. So that would make my foot picks very identifiable. So Come on, give us a number. also more valuable. So now that I know that, we're going like three hundo. Three hundo. I think that, everyone, that, everyone's going to know fair. their mind. So but I'm dead serious, gonna... though. Someone someone says 300 bucks Venmo. Boom, they just did it. You, you're sending. Yeah, I'm going to take one now. So I have it like stocked on my phone, ready to rip. There you go. Yeah. yeah well, there why, you go. Not, why not? You said you weren't having weird DMs before. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> now, yeah, they now everyone knows the price. Everyone like, asks. I just don't get it. Like, I'm not that nicely. weird. Like I, like, I don't feel that. Like, it's just my feet. Like, I wear sandals every day. Everyone sees my feet. Like, it's just, I'm not going to send anything else. But, yeah, I guess. I've never done it. But you guys are kind of convincing me at this point. Yeah. Like, we'll why move, not? We'll move on to another topic in a second, but it let's be real. The weirdest thing of the last two to five years is the fact that feet picks have become such a substantially large thing. But you know what I mean? Very, are well, hard 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 very lucrative. But like Maggie, like no one's going to be like at ICAST next year and be like, dude, did you see the feet picks? Yeah, yes, they, they are. They got leaked. Dude, they got leaked. <laughs> no, they they leaked. Are, though. Maggie, no one's going to say that because if they <laughs> say, not. did you see them? They saw them. And then people are going to be like, you're weird. You went and looked at them. But I do think it would be such a <laughs> – yeah, yeah, Anybody who talks about it would be the major face. weird one. You can It'll sell them. You. And nobody's going to be like, flex, yeah. though, if you could just walk up and be like, yeah, I just bought this house, dude. Feet picks only. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah. They'd be, <laughs> like, no they'd one's going to talk shit then. <laughs> they'd be talking about my feet at ICAST. I'd be like, I just flew first class here, bitch. You're like, I don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> Maggie's starting bio. Okay. Maggie's starting only fans, and it literally says feet picks only, and it's just (laughs) sandal fan lines every day. It just shows her updates every day throughout the summer. You'll have like a thousand only fan subscribers. Why not? I think I would like draw a face on my big toe and like make a storyline out of it. Yeah, you can make it fun. Different stuff. There's no rules. Yeah. All right. Check back in like a month. (laughs) We'll check back. We'll check back. I'm going to be living I, a much different I, life. We will, PTB will take 10% royalties. Yeah. So no. there we go. That's how we start our funding. <laughs> or maybe no. we could just get like a little PTB sticker and you could just like put that on there. <laughs> That'll be like, like they did the Playboy bunny ears forever with the tan line. We'll have a PTB thing. She's selling ad space now. On there. Yeah. This is escalating too much. Maggie, stop. I was going to say, what's the next topic? You're out of control, man. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. We'll move on. We'll move on. <laughs> All right, I did. I did have something else though, that's unrelated to that. Again. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll get it back on the rails here. That's what you said last time. <laughs> yeah, I know I fucked up, but um, okay. Actually, though, so I wanted to talk about some of like the hunting stuff that you've like been posting. I know, like you're an avid bow hunter. Um, you know, I've seen. You know, you've done some other like waterfall stuff here and there, and various other things, but. So one, I wanted to talk about kind of just like the bow hunting side of things, because I know that's something you're very passionate about. And I don't know that you share like that much about it. Um, but also, I, I kind of want to not like throw in any shade here, but I did so that like a year ago, two years ago, you did a like a video with Hunt Stand. And it was supposed to be about like you, but it was like the most not about somebody video that was about them I've ever seen. <laughs> so i'll just like break down this real quick you can fill in the gaps and then we'll talk about like your your kind of hunting stuff but they they shot like this hunt stand video i don't even know who you filmed it with or whatever but it was supposed to be about you and like a hunt that you were going on or something and literally i think you were in this video for like maybe two seconds <laughs> <laughs> and it was like about you <laughs> 
I don't know if it was really supposed to be about me. Like, I think it was just like the oh, video is titled "Her Heart." Her. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it was more so me like learning <laughs> about something that I've never necessarily like I said, like I grew up gun hunting, like rifle hunting, whitetail, but I've never done that holiday hunt before. And I've also never like I've never quartered an animal before and then like prepared it and blah blah blah. I mean, I don't know if it was supposed to be about me or not. I just showed up, I guess. But um as a favor to a friend. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I just showed up and I got to shoot a doe and also the, the, which I've never had to do before. And of course I filmed my first hunt ever. I shot the sucker three times <laughs> yeah. with a bow or gun. With a gun. And then they, the guy that I was with was like, I was really confident that that first shot was, you know, it was good. Yeah. But like, my rule of thumb is like, you know, if, if they're still there, like, you know, make sure you get a good ethical shot. So I should <laughs> <laughs> my first hunt film ever so oh. incredible i'm confident it hit the aorta in the ass but <laughs> <laughs> i i will say because i rewatched it in anticipation of this and uh, uh you dusted it on the third one no doubt anyway anyway it was still cool like it's a cool video and everything yeah uh, but so anyways, yeah, so you do, you definitely, are you, are you bow hunting this fall? Do you have like plans to do that? Yeah, I've been uh, practicing quite a bit with my bow. I guess just like a little backstory. Again, my dad getting me into all this stuff. He did, when I was really little, he bought me like a youth bow and I shot that thing all the time. And like we would go out in the yard and I loved shooting it with him, but I just, I never took it into the woods to hunt. So I would say three, four years ago now, I actually started, like, I got my own bow and started practicing, started going out in the woods with it. Um, my first year out, I successfully got a doe, a big old doe, which was awesome. It was cool. Like, I feel like that was what I needed. Like, yeah, I can do it. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, it was cool. Um, and then the following year, like, I mean, I kept hunting after that, that year, and I never got a buck, you know, in hopes of getting a buck. Never got one. The year after that, I don't believe I got one. And then I think it was that following year, I finally got my first bow buck, which was really cool. I mean, it wasn't like huge, but for a first archery buck, I mean, I think I was pretty fortunate. It was a nice, nice deer. Um, and I actually, between that, I got to go down to Texas with my girl, Sydney, and we spot and stocked hogs. I had never hunted hogs. And the first time I do it, I'm spot and stocking them with my bow. Got a That's couple sick. hogs down there with a bow, which was really, really cool. Like, did what you a freaking experience. Did you bring home the meat? Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Is the bacon better if you get it yourself? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Factual Fair. statement. Fair. Yeah. It was really yeah. cool. Ryan, don't like, you feel like you would kill a ton of hogs if you lived down in Texas? Oh, dude. So How many. would you not? I've only, I've only done it one time, and it was, like, so sick. Yeah. No, I would kill as many you want, them. whatever you want. It's Dude, like bacon. Yeah, it just looks on like to have access to it like all the time would just be crazy. But from my understanding, you don't even need a hunting license to hunt hogs down there. I don't think there's like any rules because no well because they're considered like varmint or whatever down there. So like yeah, they're like yeah, take as many as you can. It's crazy. Yeah. The only one I ever did it was like I did an archery thing too, and it was awesome. Like it made me want to like. Like, I wish I could do it all the time, honestly, because <laughs> the meat's yeah. awesome, too. But um, so I I've heard through the grapevine that you you're like. Uh, dream like archery thing is like a, an elk hunt. Is that sound? Is that accurate? How would you hear that? But yeah, I think that would be people awesome. talk like in the freaking like trees and they're bugling and they're like. Don't get me wrong. It would be cool to do it with a rifle too. And maybe that would be a good starting point. But like, I watch so many elk hunting videos where they're just like, oh, I don't know. Those close encounters, I want that would be, be nuts. Ryan, are you going this year? I am going. I'm not going on an archery trip though. I'm going during rifle. But yeah. I mean, that would be sweet too. Like, any elk hunting, I want to do so bad. Have you, awesome. have you done any like big game out of state stuff or just like. No, no, yeah. I've. I, I mean, yeah, I did that hog hunting and then I've Wisconsin whitetail hunted with my bow. So that's it. 
That's still badass, though, because I feel like Wisconsin is low-key probably one of the best, like, hunting culture states in the United States. Yeah. Like, Cody, you know, like, for sure, dude, like, the fall in, in Wisconsin, yeah. especially, like, leading up to Thanksgiving is just crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's it's unfortunate that they went to, like, the online tags and stuff, like, registering yeah. your own yes. animal. It yeah. is. Because that was, like, the biggest thing. That was the coolest thing is going into, like, the gas station to get more beer mm -hmm. and you see like antlers out of the back of a truck or something some old man shot his biggest buck after like 50 years you know right. whatever That's that so was that was awesome so mm -hmm. but now they don't have that anymore so but yeah is, it is a huge hunting culture yeah that's the best word to describe it like a culture like it's just awesome and everyone's traditions like they're you know the night before opening day traditions they're doing yeah, the like it's just mm -hmm. It's like it sounds cheesy, but it's something special. Like it's it's cool. Yeah, I feel yeah. like Wisconsin shuts down during yes. like it during does. gun open. Like it, yeah. it unless does, dude. unless you're a gas station, I feel like the whole state freaking it shuts down. Does. Everyone like goes. when we were at Point, dude, they would cancel class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that week. Like, <laughs> even, like no one's gonna come anyway. Yeah, even at work, like no one is in their offices during mm -hmm. that like tuesday or monday tuesday i mean they just expect no one's gonna come into work that's so cool yeah yeah so maggie do you guys have do you have like a family like deer camp or like how do you guys or is it just like you and your old man or what yeah um so growing up we had a really cool opportunity where like uh i mean we had some of our own land like when i was little little growing up and then um we, we kind of with some really close family friends it kind of became like a big old party up there with um they feel like family, you know, like you're that close with them. Um, I feel kind of bad because I haven't been doing that lately because that's, again, like way northern Wisconsin where the deer population isn't uh, great. Yeah. Um, so I've been hunting down here a lot now with um, Andrew and his family and kind of taking on their traditions and whatnot, which is also cool, you know, getting a taste of something else and what other people do. But um, I don't know. Sometimes I think like uh, maybe I'll just go without – hopes of getting a big buck this year and go back up and do it with my dad again because it's just special like my favorite buck memory of all time is not my biggest one like it's the one that I like my first like basket you know like buck but you know not a spike or not a fork or whatever like that first buck I got with my dad I shot it off of his back because That's it came sick. in at such a weird <laughs> angle like it's my favorite memory ever I just remember my dad going okay I'm gonna crouch down and unplug my ears Blah, blah. and i was like scared like i was on his back like this and i was like are you ready he goes yeah shoot <laughs> like this. i shot it off his back it was oh and then we found it and i cried like you know happy tears but it was it was fun that's, that's, that's so sweet sick. yeah yeah those are like the best tra like traditions and stuff too but mm -hmm. that's sick that you guys go up there and still kind of do that and yeah like same place every year, like the little bar on the lake the night before to get old fashions. And... Hell right, that's so yeah. sick. Hunter, what's your Wisconsin tradition? Because you're you're a true <laughs> northern Wisconsin, <laughs> vastly different. <laughs> um, honestly, if everybody gets <laughs> if everybody gets uh, to their stands safe and comes down out of their stands, that's a pretty big accomplishment <laughs> up in Tomahawk, Wisconsin. So. Um, well, we don't have any service or anything, so we got to preoccupy our time. Like, so we play cribbage, and cribbage just turns into a lot of bitching about rules. And uh, well, we're playing this rules, and then we are like cocktail. My dad always says that he's like, "Want a cocktail?" I'm like, "Sure, I will have sure. one. Sure, I'll have one." And then pretty soon there is a beer tower just like between three guys, and we're like, "I don't think I'm gonna make opening day." I just don't. I'm just not. I think I'll hunt the evening. I think I'll. I think I'll hunt the evening. <laughs> Who drank all our beer? Yeah. <laughs> My favorite thing about watching like Hunter's fall progress is how like <laughs> how undeserving he is, and how the opportunities <laughs> that fucking fall into his lap. Hunter is incredible. <laughs> We just roll in, roll in. Whatever luck Hunter has in the bass fishing world and everything, he has spent lips. <laughs> hunting it's, right. it's honestly unbelievable yep yep did jesse give him some of those bracelets too i, had to I, I stole this one had I stole to. this one that must be it yep <laughs> yep yeah i mean i'll just 
my dad and my my brother have been scouting the land, plowing, planting all summer long. I roll up one weekend. Oh, it's the rut. <laughs> Still like half in the bag. Oh, <laughs> Shoot the biggest deer that's been on our land in ten years. I actually botched the first opportunity and the thing came came back in. I'm like, this is pretty easy. <laughs> Dead down wind, haven't showered in three days. <laughs> Not a big deal. 18 yards, poked her. I'm like, that was easy. I guess I'm I'm done with this. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. It kills me every time. <laughs> every <guy>. time. <laughs> Go out west. Oh, there's a giant mealy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so Maggie, you kind of brought it up with the, uh, the hog hunting. So pink me and Soby have an experience with filming with barstool. I want to know what yours has kind of been like on that other end. You've gotten to do some stuff with Sydney and on the barstool outdoors side. I don't know if it's, I guess, I don't know if it's kind of the same level as when we took the spit and chiclets outside out ice fishing, they just got hammered, but, uh, <laughs> What what has your experience been like doing that? And I mean, getting included with those sort of, I mean, top level things, being completely honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll try to make a long story as short as I can, but we like long thing stories. Is, all right. Um, do you guys remember when they were hiring, like trying to find a new person for Barstool? Like Dave Portnoy put out like wanted. It was right when we went of- on that Wisconsin trip. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I didn't even see that, but I had a bunch of people send that to me and they were like, Oh, like you should apply for this. So I was like, I'll be sick. Like, sure. I'll do it. So I applied for it. And I guess they got like thousands upon thousands of applications for that and interviewed, I think seven people. Wow. Wow. And I freaking got an interview for it. I was like, Holy crap. Yeah. So I have my interview with Barstool Sports for Barstool Outdoors. And Sydney and I were already good friends before this. Hold up, where, where is this interview at? Where does it take place? Oh, uh, just like a no, just like a Zoom, Skype, something, just on the computer. Who, um, out of curiosity, for if anybody pays attention to the barstool world, like who are you interviewing? Because I pay attention to the barstool world, so I'm generally yeah. curious. Oh, I knew this was going to happen, Bart, because you were late. One of my AirPods died. That's okay. Just put it back in the charger. You. It'll I charge you. for a yeah. bit. Can then you, you get swap it out. You're good. We can hear you. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, so Sid and I were already good friends. But, oh, no, wait. Sorry. That derailed me. Um, What was his name? He's the sales guy. It's whatever sales. Barstool sales guy is his, like his handle. Uh, I don't know. Gaz? Yeah. Thanks. There you go. Yeah. Sure. Yep. I yeah, don't know. I'm guessing. Yeah. So... I had my interview and I was like, I think that went pretty well. And I'm jacked. And Sid and I were already good friends. And I don't, she's a FaceTimer. Like that's our, like if we talk a lot of times we'll FaceTime. And she just like, so happened to FaceTime me that day. And I was like, dude, like, guess what? Like I just got off of my interview for Barcelona Outdoors. And she was like, shut up. I have an interview with them tomorrow. <laughs> and just right away. I was like, I'm screwed. <laughs> like Sid's getting this, of course, you know? Um, but they were gonna have two people do it I won't get into that but then they only wound up having her do it and she was like wouldn't it be cool if like we could do this together like for my first episode like you come do it with me I really want to do a bass fishing one where do you want to go and I was like I've always wanted to go to Lake Fork and she was like all right let's go to Lake Fork and I know people down there will hog hunt too like we'll do both and I was like sick like this sounds awesome so we went and did that and filmed that so it's kind of the weird way I weaseled my way into being on an episode of that um, consolation prize, I guess. Maybe she was trying to make me feel better, but it was really cool. Um, got to meet a lot of cool people down there that I still keep in touch with. Uh, we fished with James Caldemeyer. I see him at like every show I go to still. Uh, awesome dude. Learned a lot fishing with him. I caught my PB down there. Uh, an 888 is still my PB. Dang. Yeah, China, I would really love to break double digits, but, you know, I'll take what I can get. I'm not going to catch one of those in Wisconsin, so it was cool. It was a heck of an experience for sure, but, I mean, we had a freaking great time. Like, I, yeah, I don't know what your experience was like, but I just felt like I was hanging out with my friend and made some friends. Like, I feel like the camera guys and stuff, like, they were awesome, so we all just kind of hung out, and they just filmed us doing our thing. It was awesome. 
yeah. that's cool. <laughs> our experience was uh, hanging out with our friends, but a lot of alcohol involved. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> that's probably like the best way to put it. Slightly different experience uh, on our end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure that was a great time. I feel like our trip was like a freaking grind. So, alco- like, you know, a few cocktails at night, but you were just so toasted that trying to fit all that into one trip was a lot, a lot of early mornings. And I mean, we definitely had a few cocktails at the uh, ranch and whatnot, but. Did they ever consider doing two people for bars? Yeah. I mean, I think that was their plan. Again, I don't feel like it's like my place to say. So, I, I like the, they had picked another person and then it just didn't work out so but obviously she's killing it so they probably don't need another one she's badass it's cool yeah for sure Soby, you got anything else um any other questions or anything on barstool yeah well well either i i'm gonna say right now i i don't think it's too late i think they should bring you on as a special co-host whether it's a full-time deal or it's a part-time deal. Like I, you and Sydney already have, you you know what I mean? You already have chemistry. You guys know each other. You're good buddies. Like I, there's been a lot of shows that there's been two main hosts and it's worked really, really well. So I don't see why they wouldn't do it. I, yeah. I really think, I think it'd be better that way. And also you, you do hunt, but like you specialize in fishing and bass fishing, which is like, you know, the most popular side of freshwater fishing. And she really specializes more in hunting. Mm-hmm. I just, I see it as a good yin and yang. It's not just, I'm not just pumping your tires. I think it would be, I think it would fit the mold and it'd do good. That's exactly what we were saying when we were trying to scheme this whole thing together. Yeah. Would they ever entertain it? You think, or the upper management is just like, no, we want, we want one person. We want a face of this. We got two dead air pods. So she's got to switch it over. Here we are. We can got you. you. Me now. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I would guess they're probably past that at this point. Like I said, I mean, I think she's absolutely doing her thing and killing it. I don't think she needs a counterpart, but yeah, we had said that. Like we both enjoy doing both, but it's like, she is like a stone cold killer. She also has so much experience too. Like she's so good on camera, you know, like growing up doing that with her dad, like heck of a story and stuff. And I don't like, I'm not good on camera. I don't have any experience with that stuff. So, but she's awesome. She's like, when we did that hog hunting, like I was like, all right, yeah, you know your stuff. Like she was, I just did exactly what she told me to do. She's like, okay, get out there, come in, like blah, blah. And it was, it was cool. It was fun. That's sick. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Pink, do you have any other questions or anything you wanted to re- relay over? Uh, I don't think so. I think we could, we could probably jump in if we still want to do like 1v1. We can load that thing up. Yeah, we can do that. Or I had a couple notes on my phone. I know you guys went oh, through yeah. yours. You but can get a couple. Fire it up. Know. I'm uh, I I'm dangerously in need of plugging some stuff in here. So go for it. All right. So I got some notes on my phone. This is a segment we do, Maggie, where random things we come across, and uh, we just make a note of it, and then uh, we can just chat about it. And actually, I think you'll have some good feedback on this one as well. Um. So the other day I was, uh, it was in the middle of tournament season and all of a sudden I was ordering tackle for like different tournaments and going through all my stuff. And I had put three orders into Omnia separately. Cause of course I was just like, Oh, I need these four things. And then I go to my boat and I'm like, Oh, I need these two things. And then with Omnia's premium membership, it, it, shipping doesn't matter. It ships for free. So you just grab it and keep going. Well, suddenly I had made four orders and Luke Lowy, our camera guy for the Chronicles, he texted me after I made my fourth uh, order. He's like, the whole warehouse is currently cracking up because we got a fourth order and someone yelled, Bart did another one. Yeah. So what I wanted to know is just I had the note of whenever I order tackle, I make three or four orders separately <laughs> because I always forget stuff and they have to hate me. And I just want to know, is that just me or does other people actually make a list? I don't know. I probably make a list most of the time. I feel like it's different though during like bass stuff because I I can only imagine the people that pick our orders for ice season. Like when yeah. when we order like all that shit and it's like all like tiny and, little tungsten jigs. Well, that and it, and we get like a like I think last year we ordered like five thousand jigs or something just stupid. 
<laughs> and like you know, Griff, somebody Griff sitting there, three hundred like, pinheads, <laughs> <laughs> like the full inventory, and they're just like dumping boxes. It's got to be unbelievable. But I think for like bags like that, I don't think it's a big deal. I usually do it in one just big wit one go. Okay, I I, I, I I usually end up forgetting like five crucial yeah. crucial things. I figured Hunter yeah. was on the same page as me here yeah. when we were yeah. filming Ghost. I showed up with like four different boxes of swim baits because mm-hmm. I fought, forgot a certain size of one. Right. I like I'll forget line. Like uh, that'll be the top <laughs> of the list, and I'll look down the list, and I'll go backwards, and then send, and I'll just forget it. I'm like yeah. oh well, I guess I'm using you know the Berkeley stuff. I guess but I don't know at the <laughs> store. <laughs> I feel like I still buy a lot of stuff off Tackle Warehouse though, and it always like. If I forget something, I always do like, oh, I'll just do this and then pay the five dollars extra so it comes faster and then it never comes faster and I just don't have five dollars anymore. I just get distracted <laughs> by the shirt. I just get distracted like, by the I shirt. I need to I'm get like, to a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm kinda in between both Adam and Cody. I I'll always like I'll always forget the simple stuff. Like Cody said, like, oh, I need leader line. I've needed leader line for like a week and a half. <laughs> I have no leader line. I'm pulling off different stuff from different stuff like that. And I'll forget to order that. Or I'll forget to order like one or two really crucial things. And then I'll just run to like Cabela's or somewhere else and pay way overpriced than I would have paid if I just would have remembered it. And I won't <laughs> like make the second order. I'll just go, oh, I'll go, go run and buy it. Yeah. What's, in town. It's, what's the furthest you've driven for something you forgot to buy? Oh, <laughs> hour and a half when I was down at Ufala. Ooh, I had to, I had to go find and deep crankbaits, and there's no good tackle stores by Ufala. I had to drive up to Gunnersville. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a problem. You in? Yeah, yeah I guess. That's, I mean, that's pretty cause, far. Because I think you could drive like an hour and a half in any direction from anywhere and be somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess my tackle inventory is just so bleak. Like I'll be like reaching under my chair. I'm like, oh, jig. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand how it's possible that it's like you always end up catching them on. So- like I have thousands of fucking lures and plastics, and I catch them on the one thing that I only have one of. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Every like, time. Why did I even tie that on? Or you make an order and you use none of it. Yes. Yes. And the only yeah. thing you use is what you got from the tackle store down there. And you're right. like, oh, right. okay. Dude, I have a rubber made full of stuff down, like for down south for herring yes. legs that I used for one week and none of it worked. And I was mm-hmm. like, it'll work eventually. And it's just sitting there now. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Never <laughs> haven't even looked at it. Nope. Um, okay. So next one I got, this was definitely during the week when it was like 95 every single day and it was super, super, super hot at the end of July. I know we all remember this. All it says is ice cream kick lately. Why are blizzards so good? And I think it's because I drove through DQ once a day for like a week getting different blizzards. He's like, I need a concrete mixer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. What's your, what's your favorite blizzard? What are you guys getting? Probably Oreo. Probably Dude, Oreo. I don't, I don't, I don't get blizzards, man. What I do you feel like? like? Yeah, if okay. I'm just going like deep, I feel like I'm Dilly Bar City, bro. Dilly really? bars are good. That's a classic. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's a good call. That's a classic. Soby, are you getting blizzards, Maggie? Yeah, I probably am. And same like Cody Simpleton, either Oreo or cookie dough. Like I'm just, mm-hmm. I know that's that's so <laughs> typical, but that's probably what it is. I was just going to say, I can relate to that because this is the most random thing. Like, I know I'm an 80-year-old woman for this, but I got on such a Culver's banana split kick recently. Ooh. I don't know what – like, I've never been, like, obsessed with banana splits before, but I got one there once, and it was, like, every night after dinner. I was like, you want to go, go get a banana split? <laughs> they put, like, strawberries on there, like nuts, whipped cream, like – Oh, so good. And then yeah. I got one banana split from there where they gave me, like, you know when a banana gets, like, brown and, like, mm-hmm. yeah. And, I took, and it ruined them for me for a little bit. Yeah, yeah you're like, I'm <laughs> off this. It, yeah, I'm off that. I, <laughs> I'm off the splits now for a little bit. What got me was I basically realized I had spent $50 on DQ ice cream in a week. And I was like, that <laughs> probably isn't the Take best financial easy. decision I make. <laughs> like, considering the bank called and, I, and they were like, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it can't like, hey, be worse have, than Paul you have, Yeah, you have credit card bills, and uh, you're still <laughs> buying blizzards. What are you doing? <laughs> Just um, shutting down your account for fraud. Yeah. <laughs> this guy can't be getting another New York cheesecake with He's getting these like, uh, text Was that you? Was that you? Transaction denied. No. <laughs> and they're well, not Spargo even... emails you. Are you a piece of shit or is this real? <laughs> they're not even the same Dairy Queens. They're all different locations. I just happen to be driving somewhere and I'm like, oh, Dairy Queen. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, I could get it. Caught in the know. act. A duplicate <laughs> transaction on your on your card? No, I went through twice. Actually. They're, they're pulling I, the security cam footage. They're, I'm dead <laughs> serious. There might have been twice in a day once. I might have did it at lunch and then at dinner too with Alyssa <laughs> afterwards. So yeah, it was it was a kick. That's why I brought it up. I, I put it down and I was like, man, they were really good at the end of July. I was loving it. And then there's always that time like in November, December. I guess this is only me, but it'll be like the middle of winter and it'll be like 32 degrees and i'm like what dairy queens open close to me because i need to go get a blizzard right now because it's kind of somewhat warm and it's not it's still freezing but you're like you know you just gotta yeah. indulge i'm never um, off the ice cream i don't care if it's winter time. i love ice cream Mine's Always not, on. my go-to is not dq but yeah culver's is great too i just don't I'm have a lot of them close to me then that's obviously frozen custard for the mean yeah. comments i'll get afterwards um Th hold on i want to say this thoughts on this piece of ice cream uh, i was playing cribbage with my parents this weekend and my mom went inside and she comes out with a heath klondike bar when's the last time you had a klondike bar pass or smash yeah. smash yes every time yeah smash. those are good uh and then i i did i had a couple more but this is a very good one i thought um so we stayed up at this place in pacagama for the team trail it was a cabin and, you know, there's outlets and you get there and you're like, oh, cool. I'm going to go plug my boat in. All of the outlets in this like uh, old resort, all of them except seven. And we had seven boats there were two prong, not <laughs> three prong. They're so old. Why? Because it's like old. I just was <laughs> like, <laughs> <It's> old. <laughs> dude, it was uh, like there were certain cabins. They didn't even have a three prop. Like you went uh, through the whole thing and you're like, how is this even possible? And then you get to one sucks. cabin and there's two three prongs right next to each other. And you're like, we're totally going to blow a yeah. breaker, but mm. you got we're, wires. We're kicking the window through. out of this bitch here. Yeah. <laughs> and you got wires stringing, stringing through windows. And we, somehow we never popped a breaker. But, that's incredible. Well, that's because it was duct taped down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're like, no, we're going to start a Like, fire we here. know this game. <laughs> but yeah, so I literally had written down two prong versus three prong outlets. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> that, I thought, simple. Like, it just, <laughs> just threw me off, threw me off. Um, I had one more, and it's just, uh, it also goes along with, uh, it, your guys' way in of uh, the best parts of summer with Honors. The worst part of summer is when it ends. That was when I went into a bar to get uh, food at the end of the night, and I looked at the TV, and I saw the Little League World Series was on. And I was like, I always love this time of year, but then I was like, fuck, summer's ending. Yeah. <laughs> that is another. That is another. The Little League World time. Series is on, and you always got some kid from Texas who's 13 throwing 79 miles an hour. Yeah. From 50 yeah. feet away. And Team it's Japan's hideous. hats are always like that, and yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just, I love it. Like, it's great to watch. But yeah, that was, I just literally had typed in Little League World Series. So, Dang. Uh, I did remember that one. But we can roll into Pink's 1v1v1 right now, and then we'll call her a night. All right, let's I'm do sure it. he's got this primed up and ready. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. I didn't want to do my notes anyway. Do let's it. Oh, do you do have? It. Yeah, do you have? Do, do one. Do, do one. You, you have, have to have a random yeah. note on no, your no, phone. No, no, no. I just you wanted to one. give you a hard time, Bart. No, well, let's go. Let's anyway. go. No, now we're not proceeding at all. No, I don't think I didn't like follow the, <laughs> the directions. Like mine aren't good. Give us one. Because no, sometimes one. you just have a random one in there and it's like three quarter no, inch. I keep exposing myself. Through. Mine was like something dumb I did, and I don't think I want to do that. No, well, this let's is actually let's hear it. now you gotta say it. What's a note on your phone? You're doing it. <sighs> <laughs> all right. Like, literally, this was, like, the day that you told me, like, hey, like, whatever, like, happens in your life, like, put it in your notes and we'll talk about it, whatever. So, I'm like, all right. That night, it was my – I just had my golden 28th birthday, by the way. 
Thank you. A happy Thank birthday. You. Um, so I had I had a weekend. Wow. You know what? I, like I had a weekend. You know, some drinks were consumed. Um, a lot of we went to like concerts, like live music at the bar. So like you're screaming. My voice was in rough shape. Uh, and I again, I uh, love singing. I'm not like I'm not ever gonna like post a video of me singing. I'm not that good, but like. I was Sandy in Greece once, so so I'm pretty okay. I'm senior year of high school, but um, she my tore voice it up back in the day. Well, yeah. there's I'm sure there's a video. Yeah, we'll find it. Roll the roll the clip. <laughs> <laughs> my voice was shot, and I always sing in the shower. So I was showering that night, and I could sing so low, like because my voice was like gone. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I was like I was singing this song that's like usually sung by a guy. It's like an oldies song, but it's low, and I was like. I sound good. Mm. Damn. So I'm like, you know, like when you're eight years old and you've like put your webcam on, you're like, am I really as good as I think I am? And you record yourself and you're not good. I did that. I recorded myself in the shower singing. First mistake. I did it on Snapchat. I don't know why. Idiot. <laughs> so I'm in the shower. Like I had it like this close to my face and I was singing <laughs> to see if I really sounded <laughs> oh good. Oh my God. And I'm singing. So first of all, I'm in the shower. I'm singing, which I would never post me doing, like super embarrassing. Third, like I'm not just singing, like I'm like literally singing as low as I can. Stop the recording. Must have like had water on my screen. Instantly, boom, story. <laughs> like I've never panicked so much in my life. And it was long too. So it wasn't just like, okay, go, delete. Like it was like, delete, delete. Delete. It was like five clips. So anyway, I put that in. That was one of my notes, and the one best I, case scenario. What were you gonna do with that video? Just see if I sounded <laughs> as good as I thought, and then I was just gonna delete it. <laughs> like, no. Uh, how, you. I know you had to have looked at this. How many people saw the story before you were able it. to delete I don't think it? She was just panic mode deleting, dude. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think looking. anyone saw it. I don't know, but still, it was just like the worst thing that. <laughs> Um, that's actually pretty good that is pretty good is bad. i had other stuff that like other people did but yeah i figured what, what was the song you're singing do you remember dish it sing. you don't have to it sing it, it was a jersey it was a jersey boys song <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh and like oh. it would be one thing like i'm not that bad at singing but i would never post a video but it would be one thing if i was just singing but i was literally like <laughs> <laughs> would you be mad if i said we have the screen recording right here let's uh <laughs> god i hope you have yeah, actually, like oh my fun. god here we go and I, I looked like a rat too like i had to, like my hair was on top of my head wet like my makeup like my black makeup was like down my face like oh my god anyway yeah i did that all right let's that's, play the game huh? that's a good note in your phone <laughs> that was good all right all right, so 1v1v1. One one v one. So this is going to be sweet because we have four people this time. This is what Pink has been waiting for. This is the this dream. Has always been like We've two never, versus two versus yeah, this is unbelievable. One one. So the way that this game works is everyone has an opportunity to answer every single time. So to like buzz in, you just say your name. And then I will, so like, we'll do an example one so everyone can like do it. But you just say your name. Whoever buzzes in first gets a shot to answer. Um, for this one, the categories are going to be, these are all outdoor brand slogans. You need to give me the brand that has this slogan. That's a good one. So, so they're, they're both, they're, uh, I will say they are hunting, fishing, outdoor brands. So the way that the scoring is going to work, I'll be keeping score here. If you, if you guess it by just saying the slogan, you get three points. If nobody guesses it. We'll go. I'll give you which industry it's in, and if you guess it on that, you'll get two points. And if no one gets it, then I'll give you some products that they make. And if you get it, then you'll get one point. Wait, okay, so so are, you, are you saying the slogan or the brands? Name? Yeah, I'm just for I'm clarification. Are slogan. you saying just do it, or are you saying Nike? I'm saying just do it. You're okay. you're giving me Nike. Okay. 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 So, uh, and everyone can everyone gets a chance to go. In. And if you guess and you're wrong, everyone else gets a shot at it before you get to guess again i'm gonna okay? be bad at this <laughs> all right i guarantee you i'll be worse all right this this should this will be interesting because there's some that i know some of you won't well 
we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, so here, here's, here's this is the example. You can all play. This is the example. No points are on the board for this one. So this company's slogan is the best rods on earth. Me, right. Saint Croix. Saint Croix. No, you have yeah, to. But you have to oh, oh, this is why we do an example. Abu Garcia. <laughs> Abu. 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 So, Abu. Abu. You say, say your, your name. name. The oh, I panicked. I forgot my name. I said me. <laughs> me. Oh, hungry. Let's, I'm uh, hungry. Yeah, let's let's run that back one time. Okay. <laughs> so this company's slogan is the best rods on earth. Maggie. Art. Maggie. Yeah. Uh, Saint Croix. Correct. Okay, that's how you play one v one v one v one. Okay. All right. Oh, I knew that one. So, all right, here we go. This one we're getting into the meat right away. I will be keeping score. First one, this company's slogan is built for fishermen by fishermen. Oh, you did. <laughs> you're you're going to be mad. It's shit right now. All of these, you'll be so pissed that when you get them wrong. I literally just heard this too I, on a commercial. Right? And I remember thinking like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Bart? Yeah. Okay. Can I? Bart, Bart, go ahead. No. Go. No, it's not this one. You I'm, just I'm buzzed out. it? Nope. You Maggie. Got it. Wow. It. wow. Maggie, because I swear I heard this at iCast, and they're gonna be they're gonna fire me if I'm wrong, but is it Rapala? It is not. Dang it. I'm <laughs> correct. It was on the commercial. Wow. It might even be worse. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna All I'm right. gonna I'm gonna buzz in. All right, Sam. Is it striking? It is not striking. No. Bart. Oh, go you, can't, go you already nine. guessed and got it wrong. I didn't guess. Cody. I backed Cody. out. Cody. 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 Um, can I say the umbrella company? No, that's a Just, cheat code. You can't get six companies and say like <laughs> no, no, you have to tell me the company that it's their slogan. Built for fishermen by fishermen. I Minn just Kota. heard this on Bass Incorrect. Live. It Incorrect. was on the car. No. Okay. Bart, I will go Berkeley. <laughs> Incorrect. Fuck. Oh, okay. I was really thinking it was Berkeley. Okay. I'll we'll, we'll cut we'll cut to we'll cut to the industry. Okay. Well, yeah, it's fish the it, it's fishing. I'll be more specific than that. <laughs> this is everyone ready? Because you're all back in. This is a boat company, boat manufacturer. Cody. Bo Cody. Ranger. Correct. Bart. Yeah. What? I knew it was. Mm. Oh, no, it's something else. Okay. So is that one point for honor? <laughs> that he gets two because that was on the industry one. So Hon that's honor oh. with two. Wow. <sighs> Off to a rough start, folks. This is for all those people in the background right now screaming. At oh, yeah. Their car oh, speakers. yeah. I told you, you're going to be, you're going to know every single one of these. All right. I don't like this game. <laughs> well, e all right. Everyone's in. This is number two. There, there's 15 of these, mind oh you. Oh, my God. All right, so let's need pick to, it up. We need to get some of Leave these right. Okay, number two. Here we go. This company's slogan is fish it well. Cody. Maggie. Damn. Cody. Cody. Oh, Sims. Correct, sir. It's, For it's three. Sim, it's wow. Sims Fishing Products. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's 5-0. Five, five oh. Honor leading the pack here. Wow. All right. This company's slogan is see what's out there cody oh cody you're so fast shit <laughs> yeah. oh, he got it, it. Hey, Maggie. dang it he got it he got it i'll give it to you this is the only one all, these are just all honor sponsors yeah these yeah. are like the only hashtags i ever use for christ's sakes well where are you on these yeah i don't all know right. he's really fast do you, do you even know what you're typing or is it just <laughs> we have questions okay here we go this company's slogan is "Know where you stand." Oh, so typical. <laughs> I don't even know where I am right now. I don't know that. Know where you stand. I have a feeling this is an industry I know mm -hmm. nothing about. Mm -hmm. it, it could be anybody. Mueller. Mueller. All right, let's go. Let's go to the. All right, uh, we're going uh, to the. I'm industry. gonna. I'm gonna guess because otherwise I'm gonna be screwed. Right, I'm gonna yeah. go Bart. We're gonna go with Onyx. 
That is correct, sir. Oh, oh, oh out of left field. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 Well wow. done. That's, well done. That's probably the Bravo. best moment of the podcast for Bravo. me. Bravo. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, that out of left I, I gave you no chance there. On X? <laughs> <laughs> I literally just crossed it off before you even started talking. Wow. Nice. All right. Yeah, I just well heard done. stand and I was like, is there a hunting company called Hunt Stand? And then I thought about it and I was like, it might be on X. Fuck it. I'll just go for it because I'm going to get any other hunting company wrong. Wow. Mm-hmm. Nicely done. All right. Act like you've been there before. All right. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate all right. it. You guys so, are the best. All right. Here we go. This company's slogan is speak the language. Cody. Sobe. I got Ooh. that. So, I'll, give, yeah. I'll give it to oh, us. Hunter, it Hunter, Hunter, Hunter did get it. Hunter did. Primos. Hunter's winning, so give it to me. It's Primos. <laughs> he, he already got it. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, I was going to guess Primos. Uh, give mm. it to me. Primos. I don't even know what that is. Primos. Oh, that's correct, sir. Hunter is Hunter's hot tonight, boys. Uh, Can someone tell me what that is? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hunting Hunter calls. Wisconsin Wi-Fi. I'm on delay. That, that's kind of what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. All right. All right. Here we go. We're going into number six here. This company's slogan is the revolution is here. Bart. Sobe. Bart. Vexus. Correct. Mm. Damn. Ha. <laughs> Sobe runs a Vexus boat. <laughs> I had it. But Sobe you... and Maggie yet to score here in this game. Just putting that out there. I have delayed Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> All Your right. Image is actually the cleanest it's been all night now that you mentioned that. <laughs> All right, here we go, folks. This company's slogan, go boldly. Maggie. Art. Maggie. Mercury. Correct. Oh. For the three-pointer. Nicely done, Maggie. Well done. Well done. All right. I'm going to log off. See ya. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) All right, here we go. This company's slogan, catch us if you can. Oh, no. Is this Sobe? Um, is Is that Matthews? Correct, sir. Yeah. Boom! Skunks out of the freaking boat. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I didn't think anyone was gonna get that one. All right, I'm gonna. I will lead off. This one is tough. This one's. I'll even get. I'll even throw an accent into this to, to I'm, I'm ease things you, along here. I'm gonna catch it. This this company's slogan is family, friends, and the outdoors. Soby. Sobe. Is that um uh oh, um I'm Cody. Call. Thank you for your bid. Cody. Is that Midwest uh, mid, um is that Midway USA? It's not, but that was a very good guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm Larry Cody. Cody. Thank you for your bid. Uh Mossy Oak. Incorrect. Oh, Bart. I know what it is. Bart, you want to pro shop? <laughs> no, no. Sobe. No, you have to wait. You have to wait. Maggie, Maggie, get, Maggie gets a shot together. at it first. Can I ask a question or no? Nope. You can, but I won't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Real treat. Correct. Oh! <laughs> I gave it away. Oh! You, did. you did. I I knew. Like as soon as you said that, you knew you fucked up. Yep. Way to seize an opportunity, Maggie. That was big time. Thank that you. was good. That's, that was a big three points. That's six points. You're up to. Yep. Okay. Tied Bart. Well done. Shut up. Okay. Here we go. Moving on. Everybody ready? This one, this company's slogan is catch more fish. Cody. Cody. So be Berkeley. Back. Correct. That is just. You're on tonight, bro. You are on tonight. Okay, score update. Honor with 14, Maggie with what six, Sobe with three, and Bart with six. Okay. Cody's on a frick. There's still board. plenty of time to get back in the game here. No. <laughs> this company's slogan is turning clothing into gear. Sobe. Sobe. Um, but you Bart. can't do that. Aftco. Incorrect. Hook. Incorrect. Cody. Cody. Sitka. Correct. Oh, oh, I thought that was it. 
But I didn't want to be a damn war eagle throwing that out there if I was wrong. Damn. Cody I just make myself look like a fool 24-7. It's pretty easy. Yeah, you do. It really it's, – it's unbelievable. Sometimes I feel like it's better to just register and quick and then shoot from the hip. There is, that, that is a strategy, you know. All right, here we go. This company's slogan is sensitive so you don't have to be. <laughs> Is this that <laughs> company that we talked about in the iCast thing? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Santa. Uh, I have I have no you idea. You don't have to be. Cody. Cody. Is this ugly stick? Correct. <laughs> oh, no way. No way. Everyone thought it, but they weren't going to say it. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Just- Oh uh, boy, I'm on the horse now. We, boy is just firing train, and train doing left no wrong. Points. That's 20 points for Hunter. That's incredible. <laughs> this is this this wow. is the biggest blowout in past the barb history occurring right Why now. Why is all I could think of were like those scary quarter machines and like sketchy gas station bathrooms <laughs> when you said that? That's <laughs> the good old horny goat. <laughs> <laughs> you actually say the brand name. <laughs> <laughs> Sensitive, so you don't have wait, to. wait, wait. Is that, the, is that Rough Rider? Is that Rough Rider? <laughs> this comes ripped for her pleasure. Ripped for her pleasure. Greg Hackney. 75%, 75% every time. <laughs> All right. So frustrating. Moving on. All right. We're getting down there. This company's slogan is feel the difference. Sobe. Sobe. Is that Bart. Dobbins? Incorrect. Bart. Elliot. Um, incorrect. What? Oh! That is 100% Elliot's slogan. I think it is Elliot. That is right. I know I'm right. I think it's right. I think you're I right. I know I think... that I wrote down something that's not Elliot. Yeah, but I'm still <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not on the paper. <laughs> um... Do you have the pen? No. <laughs> Maggie. Maggie. <laughs> If it's not Elliot, is it to be? <laughs> no, no. Can you can you say it again? Feel the difference. Horny goat. <laughs> it literally says it right on the website. Well, they stole it. It's stolen. Now I'm fault. right. No, I am right. I have I, to get I, points for uh, that. I would like to emphasize uh, that you are incorrect, sir. That's negative uh, one point I, for Adam for copyright. Cody? Yeah, Cody. But I'm right. <laughs> Is this a bow brand? I can't tell you that. Yeah. Is you have to answer. No, incorrect. Okay. It's a good guess. I, I'm protesting because I'm correct. I should <laughs> yeah, get three pro- points. Protest all you want. I don't give a shit. I have my game. I just showed it. All right, yeah. let's hear it. Come on. No, you got to go. Well, no, we're ready now. It, th- it's a this is a, time. This is a, yeah. it, it's, it's a fishing brand, which I think you all guessed. And you, do you, do you want to guess again or do you want me to give you the good product? Elliot. Incorrect. You want me to tell you it's wrong again? Now you lost another turn. Shut up. Incorrect. Well, they stole it. Incorrect. <laughs> it's stolen. I don't know what to tell you. It's a bullshit. I'm trying to think who else it is. Well, is it? Uh... I'm looking for the original feel the difference. This is, is going to be so Loomis? easy. Incorrect. Um, um, shooting one out here, Cody. Cody. Yamaha. Incorrect. Mm. Uh, did you give us a clue yet? Uh, well, that it was a fishing, fishing one. If I give you another one, we're dropping her down to one pointer here. I'll I'll, I'll shoot from the hip. All so right. be Denali rods. Incorrect. Might Anybody well. else? Anybody else? We're going to one. This is a fishing real company. Sobe Shimano. Oh. Incorrect. Bart. Bart. Daiwa. Incorrect. Cody. Cody. Abu Garcia. Incorrect. What the fuck? Just Maggie, name take a, a shot. Name a real. Y'all brand, stop. Maggie. That's because I got it right already. Feel the difference. You, you, you did. Everybody obviously Come knows on, it for something else. Lose. PC fun. <laughs> PC fun. <laughs> <laughs> Any 
Maggie? Maggie? Lose, sure. Correct. <sighs> wow. Yeah, glad we all knew it for that. <laughs> That, well, that, should, that should be sent to Lose's marketing department. <laughs> like, dude, you got to do something different. Yeah, this is not working. <laughs> no one people are not there. remembering this. That I mean, yeah, you're you're right. But feel feel the difference. Shimano's better than Lose. <laughs> they didn't say it was better. They just feel, said feel, right, the, feel the difference. <laughs> this one this one feels like sands in it. The difference is so <laughs> unknown. You don't even know their slogan. You think of an ice rod company. <laughs> This one's gear strip out within a year. <laughs> All right, here we go. Moving on. All right. This company's slogan is the science and art of fishing. Oh. Cricket. Anyone? Anyone? Class. Sobe, is that is that um is that power bait? Ooh, incorrect. Good guess. Bart. Good guess. Bart. Z-Man. Correct. Oh. I wouldn't have got that one. Hey, Bart, eat shit. <laughs> I should be up to nine points right now. Oh, that you is, you yeah. are at nine points. Actually. I should be at 12. Well, you just said nine, so that's what you got here. So, All right. Not good at math. This is it. This is for all the marbles. Everyone ready? Ready. No shooting at the hip. If you know it, say it. You gotta not... know this. I you need to answer within one second of buzzing in. Otherwise, I'm taking it away. This company's slogan is because you can't choose the weather. Bart. Shelby. Bart. Blackfish. Correct. Oh, I All right. Let's hear it. All right. Let's hear it. Coming in fourth place, Sam Shelby. <sighs> In, in third place, Maggie with seven. Nice Bart job, in second with 12. And Cody Hunter with 20 points. That well was done, impressive, sir. Cody. That well, was, yeah, that was that very was impressive. Really, well was I still wouldn't have caught you. It's fine. I'll be here in two weeks. You were just so fast. Yeah, I know. He was. He was. He was coming in hot. He, was he just went on a rain Sometimes of terror. It's not a compliment. You took the only ones I knew. <laughs> Ryan, that was a really good 1v1v1. <laughs> I think that was yeah. a good one. It was, good. It was, was nice having good. a full squad here for it. Well done. Very well good. Done, folks. Very good. All right. Well, I don't think we have anything else. Just to thank Maggie for joining us for this very long podcast. <laughs> if you're still here, <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry that you don't have anything else going on in your life. <laughs> and Maggie, give a shout out where people can follow you at if they're brand new to meeting you here today. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty much Maggie Joe Outdoors on just about everything. So. I uh, share my primarily fishing adventures, bass and ice fishing, a little bit of hunting sprinkled in there, and any other fun, dumb stuff I can get myself into. So, yeah, come tag along. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on here. Yeah. yeah it's, been, you guys. it's been fun, you know. It's, it's been like real. <laughs> it has been a good time. So thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Pass the Barb. And until next time, we'll catch you later. 